All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Men Up. That's tonight's topic. Men Up. Okay. Let's open up with the book of Luke chapter 7 verse 31. So this topic, we need to go over it because we're dealing with, um, as a nation, we have a lot of issues in our nation. Okay. And the men are the leaders of the nation. But what we have right now in terms of the leaders of the nations, talking about the men, we have weak men in our nation. You understand? We have weak men in our nation. And tonight's topic, we are going to teach the men how to grow up. Okay? Give me the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Read that. The book of Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Come on. And the Lord said, where unto them shall I liken the men of this generation? Mm -hmm. And to what are they like? Come on. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Stop right there. Oh. So, hold on. This is Christ speaking. He says, what can I compare the men of this generation? So, Christ is talking about the men of this generation. The men of this generation is the men of that generation of during the time of Christ. So he's asking, well, what can I compare the men of this generation? 2022. Read verse 32 again. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 32. Read. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Stop right there. Christ says, the men of this generation, they are like unto children. So what is Christ letting us know? The quickest way to see if, 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 if a brother is a man or he's still a boy, guess what? Christ is going to tell you, he says, the men of this generation, they are like unto children. So what is Christ teaching us? Christ is teaching us that although they look like men physically on the outside, but they're still kids. They are overgrown babies. That's what Christ is saying. Christ says, the men of this generation, they are like kids. So they are overgrown babies. They are still kids. But they look like they look like men, but they are not men at all. You understand? So we're going to dissect, you understand, the characteristics of these overgrown babies. You understand? Read again. Verse 32. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 32. Read. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Uh-huh. And calling one to another. Say and say, Read. We have piped unto you. And you have not danced. Mm -hmm. We have mourned to you. And you have not wept. So one, th one thing you're going to notice. That the Lord is teaching us. That the men of this generation. Because they are overgrown boys. They are overgrown babies. It says they are like unto children. Sitting in the marketplace. Because you ever take, you, you take children to a mall. Take children to a marketplace. Where they are selling and all that. Where there's many people. Children will be running around. You understand? They'll be running around it, not knowing what, they, what, what they're supposed to do with themselves. So the Lord is saying, the men of this generation, they are just like that. They are like children. It says what? It says, calling one to another saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. What is this talking about? Peer pressure. That's one of the characteristics of these overgrown boy, boys or babies. You understand? Peer pressure. They easily succumb to peer pressure. Meaning what? They don't have a spine. They are weak. You understand? Then it says, we have mourned to you and you have not wept. Meaning what? We said this to you, but you're not moving. You're not changing your mind. We cannot influence you. The men of this generation, Christ says, they are like kids. They are like that. When they don't get what they want, they throw ten traps. That's what the Lord is saying today. He's letting us know. He spoke to the men of, this gen of that generation back then. He's saying the same thing to us today. And it's worse than it was back then. You understand? Hold this. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 54. 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 54. The Lord is letting you know that the men of this generation, which are not men, they are just overgrown boys. The Lord is saying, they are what when they don't receive or get what they want, they throw tantrums. Watch this. 2 Ezra 5, verse 54. Read what you got. 2 book of Ezra. Chapter 5, verse 54. Mm -hmm. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. You see what the Lord is saying? He's telling Ezra, says, consider thou also 
that how that ye are less of stature than those that be before you. Because the men of that generation, guess what? Those men were not weak men. Our forefathers, they were not weak men. They were men of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and counsels. You understand? So now when you compare the type of men back then and the men of today, they are not men at all. The Lord is saying they are just overgrown babies with what? With beards. You understand? With deep voices, but they are still kids. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Because society teaches black men to grow up, but they don't teach black men to mature. So black men today, they are immature. You understand? They are immature. They appear that they, they got it. They, they, they know what, they, that what they're doing. They appear that they, they have everything together, but they do not. You understand? They've got cracks in their lives. They've got cracks in their mindsets. Okay? Read that again, verse 54. Second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 54. Read. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. You see that thing? Read on, verse 55. Watch this. And so are they that come after you less than ye. You see what he's saying? He says, those that come after us, they are going to be less of stature in mind, in spirit, in might. They are going to be less also. They are just going to be what? They are going to be children. They are going to be what? Immature. That's what the Lord is saying. Read on. As the creatures which now begin to be old. Mm -hmm. And have passed over the strength of youth. He says, as the creatures which now begin to be old, meaning what? Because remember, the older generation, the young generation today, they don't listen to the older generation. They are disrespectful. They think they know everything, but they don't know anything. They are immature. You understand? They are still children because a, the, the, a child needs to be what? A child needs to be fed. A child's diaper needs to be changed. A child needs to be rocked to sleep. A child needs to be dressed up. The Lord is saying the men of this generation, they are just like that. They are overgrown babies, overgrown boys. Guess what? They are still sucking on their mother's breasts. That's what you're seeing today. You see weak men who are still attached to their mother's breasts. We see them in the world. We see them in the truth as well. In the congregation, I'm seeing that type of behavior. Why? Because the laws of God are not being applied. You understand? We're just faking the funk. Okay? Now go back to Luke 7 verse 32 again. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 7 verse 32. Read. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. and, calling, and calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. Read. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. Because they throw tantrums. Now watch this. I'm going to deal with the first part. It says, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Watch this. Because it says, these men, they are kids. They are not men yet. Okay. They need to be taught how to man up. Give me that in Isaiah 3 verse 12. Okay. One of the biggest contributors of, you see, men today, they are weak because a lot of them, they are raised by their mothers. And because these women, our sisters, our mothers, they don't keep God's commandments. So they teach these sons that they've got. They raise them up to be emotional. They raise them to be into their feelings. They raise them up to be women, but they look like men, but they are really women. You understand? Give me Isaiah 3 verse 12. Watch this. This is what the Lord is saying about this thing. Isaiah is prophesying what will happen to the black men in the last days. Watch this. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. Come on. As for my people, mm -hmm. children are the oppressors. Children are the oppressors. So children will oppress the, or the mothers. Children will oppress their parents. How will they oppress their parents? He's going to tell you how they are going to oppress their parents. Keep reading. And women rule over them. Stop right there. Women rule over them because women are emotional. You understand? Up, down, throughout the day, the emotions go up, they go down. Roller coaster throughout the whole day. As men, we cannot be like that because we were not built like that. You understand? We were built to be firm, to direct, to correct, to teach, and to guide. That's our job as men. Okay? Read that part again. And women do what? And women rule over them. Women rule over them. So the men that Christ is talking about, they are raised up by their mothers. You understand? So women rule over them. 
They rule over them in terms of how they think, how they dress, how they act, how they interact with other men in the world is because they what? They, they go in, they have the spirit, they have an effeminate spirit on them. They are into their feelings and emotions. Okay, go ahead. Oh, my people, mm -hmm. they which lead thee cause thee to err. Come on. And destroy the way of thy paths. He says, oh, my people, they which lead thee, meaning the women that are leading you, the women that are ruling over you, he says, they cause you to err. What is the error? Emotional. Because they raise weak emotional men. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, they which lead thee will cause you to be emotional, to be into your feelings. You understand? Go ahead. And destroy the what? And destroy the way of thy paths. Because the way of a man's path is what? The way of a man's path. Give me First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. The way of a man's path is like this right here. Watch this. The book of First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. This is King David. Okay. Now he's, a, he's about to die. He's, he's teaching his son Solomon how to be a man. Watch this. First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Because men raise men. You understand? Men raise men. Women cannot raise a man. It's impossible. You understand? They can do their best and all that as a single parent, but the, the, a boy needs a father. A boy needs a male figure in his life so he can know how to be a man and how to deal with men and how to talk to a man. Talk like a man. Say it with your chest. Okay? Read that. First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Read. First book of Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Now the days of David to nine. That he should mm -hmm. die. Come on. And he charged Solomon his son, saying. So he's charging Solomon his son, meaning he's going to command him, he's going to instruct him like as a father. Read. I go the way of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. You see that thing? He says, I go the way of all the earth, meaning what? He's about to die. He says, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. What does that mean? Because remember, King Solomon was a male. He wasn't a female. He was a male. But King David is telling King Solomon, he says, listen, my son, you must show yourself to be a man. You understand? Show yourself to be a man. Meaning what? You must grow some stones, grow some bolitos. That's what he's telling you. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Verse 3. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. That's the first thing. That's the first thing of being a man. This is the first characteristics of being a man is what? You must keep the charge of the Lord thy God. You must keep God's commandments. You must be in this Bible and do what it says. Follow after the footsteps of your fathers. Okay, go ahead. To walk in his ways. To walk in his ways. Remember it says, they which lead thee cause thee to err. And destroy the way of thy path. Because the way, the, the way of a man's path is what we're reading here. To keep the charge of the Lord his God and to walk in all his ways, to walk in the ways of the Lord, not to walk in the ways of the woman. You understand? Go ahead. To keep his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments. And his what? And his commandments. And his commandments. That's what it means to be a man. You keep God's commandments. You understand? You're not into emotions. You're not into your feelings. Why? Read the next part of that verse. Go ahead. And his judgments. And his what? And his judgments. And his judgments. Because as a man, you need to be able to make sound judgments. You understand? You cannot, be make, you cannot make decisions based on how you feel. You can't make decisions based on how your emotions. That is not sound judgment. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Give me Sarah. Give me Sarah chapter 17. Um, read verse, read verse 7. Sarah 17, verse 7. Watch this. Because if you are emotional, if you're into your feelings, because women they raise their emotional creatures. So if they raise a boy, that boy is gonna be emotional. That boy boy will be crying for everything all the time. When he grows up, he's not going to know how to deal with the men, with men in the world. You understand? Either he's going to become, 
he's going to become gay because that's usually what happens or he's going to hook up with a sister that is going to be a mother to him that those are the two options he's going to go out he's going to marry a sister that is going to be like his mother a woman that is going to mother him not a woman that is going to teach to teach the children no if he doesn't do that he'll become a homosexual like Uso means in, as an example you understand now read that Sirach 17 verse 7 read what you got the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 17 verse 7 read with all he filled them with the knowledge of understanding uh -huh. and showed them good and evil you see that thing the Lord gave us the knowledge of understanding what is that his commandments. He, then he says he showed them good and evil because God's laws will teach you right from wrong. They'll teach you how to make proper and just judgments. Not according to how you feel in your heart, not according to your emotions. You understand? So go back to First Kings chapter 2, verse 3 once again. Read them. First book of Kings chapter 2, verse 3. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Mm-hmm. To walk in his ways, Read. keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. Read on. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest mm -hmm. and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. You see the thing? And whithersoever thou turnest thyself. First Kings 2 and verse... Three. Read that again for me. First book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Read. To walk in his ways. Mm -hmm. Keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it, is, as it is written in the law of Moses. Come on. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. Read. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So now, King David is instructing his son Solomon on how to be a man. How not to be emotional. Because the laws of God is not about your emotions. You understand? It's about right from wrong. As it is written in the Holy Bible. You understand? The decisions that have been made, they are justified by God's commandments. His laws and his statutes. So King Solomon, King David is teaching his son King Solomon how to be a man. You understand? How to be upright before the Lord and before the nation of Israel. That's what he's teaching him right there. So guess what? Go back to Isaiah 3 verse 12. Go back there. Because when you raised up, when you are raised by your mother, guess what? You are going to be emotional. We see a lot of emotional black men today. They are unable to, uh, to deal with the matters in the community. They are able to resolve issues with a clear-headed mindset. They always have to put their emotions into it. You understand? That's why today, the black man don't get no respect. Why? Because the black man has not taken his rightful place as the leader of the community, as the head of the house, as the head of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, the black woman don't respect the black man. Why? Because we still want to be, we still want to be mothered by these women. Black men want to be mothered by black women instead of being the leaders of the sisters. You understand? So now the sisters, they say, no, there's no good man out there. Why? Because the black man don't want to get his mind right. He does not want to get his act together. He does not want to examine himself. You understand? Okay, so watch this. Read that again. Isaiah 3 verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As Read. for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Uh -huh. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, mm -hmm. and destroy the way of thy paths. They're gonna destroy the way of the path, the way of the right, the, the, the right path for the for the for the man, for the black man, and the black woman will follow after the black man. Guess what? Is what we read in First Kings, what King David was instructing his son Solomon how to be a man. You understand? Watch this. Because guess what? When women rule over you, they lead you. They're going to cause you to be emotional. They're going to destroy the way of your path of becoming a man. They're going to destroy your path to manhood. Because they are what? They are not coming with the Bible. And when they come with the Bible, they come in the name of Christianity and white Jesus. You understand? So watch this. 
So when, when women instruct and teach the men, here's what happens. Give me 2 Chronicles 22, verse 2. 2 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 2. Watch this. This is the reason why you see today in a black community, guess what? The black woman is always in the front. The black man is, 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 take, is taking the back seat, holding a woman's handbag with his balls in the woman's purse. That's the reality of the situation. We're not going to sugarcoat it. That's what's going on. Now read what you got. Second Chronicles 22 verse 1. Read that. Second book of Chronicles chapter 22 verse 1. Read. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead. Read. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. Mm -hmm. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. So now Ahaziah is ruling now. He's the king, he's, he's, in, he's ruling in Judah, southern kingdom. Okay, watch what happens. Go ahead. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. Stop right there. Now I want you to see something here. It says 40 and 2 years old. He was 42 years old. 42 years old. He is a 42 year, 42 year old man, right? Keep going. Watch this. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter. No, no, what verse Hold on. Read verse 2 again. You jump something. Read that again, verse 2. Excuse me, sir. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 2. Read. 40 and 2 years old was Isaiah. When he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Go ahead. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. So now this man, he's the king. He's the king of Judah. He's 42 years old, right? Watch what happens next. Go ahead. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. For his what? For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. This is an overgrown boy who is now the king of Judah. He's a, he's a 42 year old boy. He says his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So his mother was ruling over him. He was the king, but his mother was ruling over him. He was a mama's boy. 42 years of age. Guess what? His mother was still his counselor. His mother was still telling him what to do, how to do things. You understand how to speak, how to be a king, how to rule. His mother was guiding him and counseling him. You see this thing? And you see that today in the black community, in our community today, you see the same thing. You see, um, you see an older sister in the household. You see she's got, she's got uh, older brothers even. But she's the one that's got a big mouth. She's the one that tells them what to do. She's the one that uh, checks them. She'll be shouting at them and screaming at them. And she's younger than them. That's what you see. You understand? That's what you see all the time in the black community. You understand? You see old men, 50-year-old men, they are drunks. You understand? They smoke weed. You understand? They are good for nothing. And guess what? Whenever the black woman shows up, they always keep quiet. Why? Because that's an example of what you are seeing here. That's the reason today you see the black communities destroyed this day. Why? Because the black man has not taken his rightful place as the head of the nation. Read again verse 3. I want you men to understand this thing. This man was 42 years old. He was 42 years old. Read it again, verse 3. Come on. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 3. Mm-hmm. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. Go ahead. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. You see that thing? His mother was his counselor. So this was a mama's boy, 42 year old king of Judah. A grown ass man. You understand? 42 years old, but his mother was still telling him what to do. His mother was still counseling him. His mother was still dressing him up. His mother was still feeding him. You understand? Did this man not have a wife? Of course he had a wife, but his mother was still counseling him. That's why today you see black men get married, but the mother is still ruling his house. When the wife says something, the wife wants to speak, he always bring his mother's name up all the time. That's not a man. And by the way, that's not a marriage. That's the marriages you see today in our community. 
The black man gets married, but the mother is running the show. The mother is the one that telling the wife what to do. You understand? And whenever the wife speaks, whenever they have a disagreement, whenever they have a fight, which they will, guess what? He always bring his mother's name up. That is a simp right there. That's not a man. That's a good for nothing Negro. You understand? The Lord cannot use him. He needs to get his mind right. Okay? Read on. Watch what happens when your mother cancels you outside of God's commandments. Watch this. Read verse 4. Go ahead. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Like Stop right there. Hold on. He did what? Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. Because why? It says, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. Because the way of a man to manhood is the laws of God. You understand? So now because his mother was counseling him, he didn't, the elders didn't counsel him. His mother was his counselor. So what did he do? He says he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He was doing evil. He was not a righteous king. He was doing evil stuff. Go ahead. Like the house of Ahab. Mm -hmm. For they were his counselors. For they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. You see that thing? It says, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. So they were counseling him to destroy him because the counsel that they'll give him is what? Is to destroy him. Okay? Now watch this. Um, give me, remember, read verse 4 again. Okay? Read verse 4 again for me. I'm going to show you something here. Watch this. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 4. Read. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, uh -huh. like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. You see, you see, he says, for they, because they were his counselors. So not only did he have his mother counseling him, he had many women counseling him. It says, they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. So he, guess what? He was surrounded by women. Women were counseling him to his destruction. And that's what you are seeing today. Black men asking counsel from women. Black men are surrounded by women are seeking counsel from them. You see it in, the, in politics. You see it in the ANC. You see it in EFF. You see it in this political organization. Not only that, you see it in the Christian church where you see the pastor is up there but the wife is whispering in his ear. The wife is the one that's telling him how the congregation must run, how the congregation must go. What must he teach? How must he teach? Don't talk to that sister in the congregation. Don't talk to that sister. I don't like it. She's this, she's that. Because why? Pillow talk. You understand? So likewise, this king right here was being what? His mother was what? Was whispering in his ear. Now watch what happens. Because remember, when women counseling you, Wicked women counsel you. Here's what happens. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 5 verse 8. Okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 5 and verse 8. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 5 verse 8. Read that. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 5 verse 8. Read. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Come on. And the fire shall be oft sent out again. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Come on. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. You see what the Bible is saying? It says menstruous women will bring forth monsters. Because it says there shall be a confusion also in many places. In the, in the places, where, which places? In the community. In our, in our communities. Because re, actually, we don't actually have community. We don't, there's no such thing as a black community. Think about it. We only have, we have black individual lives. We have black individuality in, the, in, 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 in where we stay, in the Kasis. There's no community. Because if we're a community, it means we think the same thing. We think the same way. We guess what? We are in the same mind. But as a nation, we, are, we don't have black community. We have black individuality. I'm going to prove what I mean by that. Hold this. Give me the book. Give me the book of um, First, First Corinthians, okay? Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Watch this. There's no such thing as a black community. 
Because if we're a community, this is what the law says, what a community is about. Read that. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Read. Now I beseech you, brethren, mm -hmm. by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Come on. that ye speak the same thing. That ye all, that ye all, that ye all speak the same thing. Meaning all 12 tribes of Israel, we must all speak the same thing. But today, in our so-called community, because we don't have a, such, such a thing as black community, we have black individuality. Everybody is believing in different things. You understand? I do me. The other one says, I do me. Your law. You do you, I'm going to do me. So there's no unity in, the, in our nation. You understand? That's why the Lord is commanding us here through the Apostle Paul. He says, you must all speak the same thing. Go ahead. And that there be no divisions among you. That there must not be divisions among us. Right now, there's divisions among us. You understand? We are divided in politics and religion. Some say they are yeah. EFF, you understand, ANC and whatnot. Some say Ambazalwani, Jehovah's Wickedness, seven-day disadvantage and all that. We are divided in politics, religion, and democracy. We're not keeping God's commandments. So now as a nation, we are divided. You understand? Go ahead. But that you be perfectly joined together mm -hmm. in the same mind and in the same judgment. You see what the Lord is commanding us? He says we must be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So that means how we judge matters, we use the laws of God. We use God's commandments. So now the Lord is saying there's confusion in our so-called community. Because we don't have a community, we have individuality. Everybody doing their own thing. And guess what? We are divided, but the nations, they destroy us collectively. The nations are able to work together to destroy us because we are divided. You understand? So go back to 2nd Ezra 5, verse 8. Watch this. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Stop right there. In many places of the children of Israel where we are scattered, the law says there's going to be confusion. Who's going to bring the confusion? Hold this. Give me 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. Watch this. It says, there's going to be a confusion also in many places where the children of Israel are scattered all over the world. Okay? Watch this. Read. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 33. Go ahead. For God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. God did not author of confusion because the Lord is saying, in the last days, he says, there's going to be confusion where we are scattered, okay? The Lord is not the author of confusion. So obviously, the confusion that exists in our so-called communities is not authored by the Most High God because he's not the author of confusion. Read. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 33. Mm -hmm. for, for God is not the author of confusion, Read. but of peace. Mm -hmm as in all churches of the saints you see that thing the lord is the author of peace in all churches of the saints what's going to bring peace between the black man and the black woman guess what the laws of god is going to bring peace because the black man will take his rightful place as the head the black woman will take her rightful place as the tail to submit to follow the command of the black man according to the scriptures the reason why there's confusion now is because the black man has not taken his rightful place you cut the head, which is the black man, the body will fall to the ground. Who's the body? The black woman. Our sisters. You understand? Go ahead. Let your woman keep silence in the churches. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, let the women keep silence in the churches. Meaning in the church, in terms of what? The women cannot be standing in front of the pulpit teaching the men in the congregation. That's against the laws of God. But what you are seeing today in the churches Women are in the pulpit, you understand, talking about their pastors and all that. They are out of order according to the Bible. Read on. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Go ahead. For they are commanded to be under obedience. As also said the Lord. So now he says, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also said the law. Because there's the law that commands the woman who, who, there's the law that teaches the woman 
how she must behave. There's a law that commands the man how he must behave himself. Now, give me that in Genesis 3, 16 real quick. It says, they, must, they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. Now, let's see the law. Give me that in Genesis 3, 16. Okay, let's read it. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Unto the woman he said, mm -hmm. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Read. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You see that thing? It says your desire, the desire of the black woman will be to her husband. Meaning what? And this husband, the, the man, will rule over the woman. Meaning what? The man is the head. That's what the Bible is saying right there. So the reason why you see today our sisters, they've got menstrual cramps. They've got child labor pains. When they give birth and all of that is because of disobedience. Disobedience. Our foremother disobeyed. E, Adam, guess what? As a judgment, guess what? Every month, there's menstrual cramps as a reminder of your disobedience, not wanting to what to submit to the black man. You understand? When you're pregnant, you get child labor pains. You give birth in sorrow is because of what? As a reminder of not being obedient to your husband. The Bible says your desire to your desire shall be to your husband, and he, your husband, shall rule over thee. He's your head. You understand? So today, the reason why this confusion is because now the roles are reversed. The black man is not in the front no more. The woman is in the front and is causing everybody to go into hell. Now it's time for the Lord to bring the black man back to for him to keep his commandments, to lead and direct and guide his nation according to the laws of God. So go back to 2nd Exodus 5, okay? 2nd Exodus 5 is 8 again. Second you know what? I'm sorry, go back to 1 Corinthians 14. I want to bring something out. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34. 1 book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 34. Go ahead. Let your woman keep silence in the churches. Uh -huh. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Read. For they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the Lord. So because, guess who, guess what? The reason why the Apostle Paul is addressing this is because during the time of the, the, the apostles, the church of Corinth, the women was ruling over the men. The apostle Paul had to address this because this is out of order. It goes against the laws of God. Now it says, it is a shame for the women to speak in the church. You understand? It says, it's also, they, well, wait, it says, they are what? They are commanded to be under obedience as also said the law. That's what we read in Genesis 3.16. Next verse, verse 35. Come on. Verse 35. And if they learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Go ahead. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, if they will learn anything, it says, let them ask their husbands at home. Because your husband, is. that's why it says, your desire shall be to your husband. You want to learn, you must go to your husband to learn the scriptures. What does the Bible say? I'm studying, I don't understand. What does it mean when the Bible says this? What does it mean when the Bible says that? Your husband will what will give you the understanding, will explain to you what it means. If you're not married, the leadership in the church, you understand, the leaders in the church, they are the ones that are going to show you and guide you what does this Bible mean? How are you supposed to conduct yourself according to the scriptures? You understand? That's why it's, for, it's a shame for women to speak in the church. Why? Because they are the main ones that usually bring confusion in the church. That's why, go back to 2nd Exodus 5 verse 8, because today, as a nation, we are, we are the most confused nation on earth. Because what? There is no leadership in the nation of Israel. There's no leaders in our nation. So we need to correct that with the word of God. Read that, 2nd Exodus 5 verse 8. 2nd book of Exodus 5 verse 8. Go ahead. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall be oft sent out again. So the confusion will be in many places where the children of Israel are. Okay, go ahead. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Watch this, go ahead. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Are these women that bring confusion, the law says, 
These are menstruous women, meaning they are unclean women. They are women that are spiritually and mentally and physically defiled. So the Lord is saying, these women, they are going to bring forth monsters, meaning they want to give birth to what? To young men that are going to be monsters. They are the ones that are going to terrorize the community. They are the ones that are going to rob, rape, murder, fill up the prisons. You understand? Sack their pen, smoke weed. You understand? Smoke hardly. Sleep around. Pop babies they don't take care of. You understand? They're not going to want to work. They're going to steal from their mothers to buy cigarettes. They're going to steal from their mothers to buy nyawe. They're going to steal the cutlery in the house, the teaspoons, the knives and all of that. The stoves to do what? To, to get high. That's what the Lord is saying right there. He says, these unclean women, these menstruous women, he says, they are going to bring forth these monstrous kids that you see running around the communities today. That's what the Bible is saying. You understand? So because why? They are being led by the women. Women that don't keep God's commandments. We're not talking about the sisters in the congregation that keep the laws of God. We're talking about our sisters in the world that don't keep the laws of God. You understand? So as a sister, when you come into the truth, you must humble down and obey and do what this Bible says so we can build a nation. You understand? Watch this. Now, go back to Second Chronicles. You know what? Give me wisdom of Solomon 15 verse 14. Because remember, when women are counseling you as a man, there's going to be chaos in the nation. And that's what you are seeing today. It is, it's happening on all fronts. In the churches, that's what's going on. In the schools, that's what's going on. In the churches, in politics, that's what you see. And it's only affecting our nation. It's not affecting the Chinese. It's not affecting the Indian. It's not affecting the white man. It's affecting us. We, the people of the book. We are the ones that our co communities, so-called communities are broken up. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon 15 verse 14. Because the Lord is saying, these menstruous women, these unclean women, they are going to bring forth monsters. Why? Because today you see monstrous brothers in the in in the world, in our in our so-called communities. An example: old men, they don't know how to talk. They cannot guide young men. They don't set the right example for the young men growing up because they also they don't know how to do it. You understand? So they are smoking weed. They drink all day, every morning. Bazalamata is every corner. We see it in in our classes. We see it all the time. The every corner, there's, there's, they're, they're drinking, they're smoking weed, sagging their pants. That's what you are seeing this day. You understand? So now, read that. Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 14. Come on. And all the enemies of thy people mm -hmm. that hold them in subjection are most foolish. Wait. And are more miserable than very babes. So read that verse again. Read it slow for me. Verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15, verse 14. Uh -huh. And all the enemies of thy people. Stop right there. And all the enemies of thy people. Who's the enemies of our people today? Young black men and overgrown boys that don't know what to do with themselves. It says what? They are going to be enemies, enemies of their own people. That's why today you see black on black crime. You see uh, black men killing black women. You see black men raping young girls. You see black men stealing, robbing, murdering, and raping. That's what you're seeing today. He says what? It says, and all the enemies of thy people, the enemies of our people is going to be these kids that are being give, that are being that are being birthed by menstruous women. Because you notice that when you look at the news, right? You notice that you see a, a son, a boy, a brother in the community, so-called. The community will like, listen, this child is causing problems in our community. He's terrorizing, he's robbing, he's, he's, he's stealing and all that. The mother will be saying, no, and all of that. And when the community wants to chastise him, the mother will protect him. And when he gets locked up, when he goes to jail, guess who's the first person to go there to bail them out? The black woman, the mothers. So what are you teaching this man? What are you teaching this boy? Because he's not a man, he's a boy. What are you teaching him? You are teaching him that it's okay for him to do the evil that he's doing. 
And when the people in, in, the, in, in our nation wants to deal with them, guess what happens? The black woman comes and say, no, hey, Mtanami, hey, what? You understand? And all that. That's what they do. And she knows that his, her son is the devil, but she will protect him. Guess what? They are the ones that come back, they come out of jail, they kill their mothers. They are the ones that do that. They shoot their mothers in the face. They stab, they beat their mothers, they steal from them. That's what you see on a daily. But nobody's talking about this stuff. Okay, but we're going to talk about it. Read verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15, verse 14. Come on. And all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection are most foolish and are more miserable than very babes. He says, these kids, this is what, and that hold them in subjection because guess what? These kids, these overgrown babies and boys, they, they are holding their mothers in subjection, in, in what? Captive. You understand that? That's what they're doing. That's why today mothers are afraid of their kids. They are afraid of their own sons. You understand? So instead of correcting him, he will say, no, ma when, when the mother gets, uh, you know, that Sasa check, that Sasa money, guess what she does? She says, no, this is this, this cigarette. Because I know Mandla, yeah, so I'm putting this money away for him. That's what they do. That's what's going on every day. We see it all the time. These overgrown boys, they are oppressing their mothers. Mothers, guess what? When they get paid month end, they have to put money aside to indulge him in his sins, to smoke, you understand, to drink, to indulge in his wicked lifestyle, destroying the community. Okay? It says what? It says, I'm most foolish because these are not wise men. These are feel, these are evil men. These are these are dumb men. That's what the Lord is saying. He says they are dumb and are more miserable than very babes because. These monstrous men, these overgrown boys, they are miserable. They are miserable, they are emotional, they are into their feelings, and guess what? They are violent too. Because they don't know how to resolve conflict. You correct him, he's going to fight you. You correct him, he's going to want to beat you. Because they are overly emotional. Because why? They are not men. They are overgrown boys. That's what the Bible is saying right there. Now watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 20 verse 4. Because they are the ones that you see them roaming, roaming around the cassis. What are they doing? They have their pants on their bums. They've got their pants on their ankles. You see their underwear and all that. Watch what the Isaiah says about this. Give me Isaiah 20 verse 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 20 verse 4. Read. Right. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptian prisoners. Mm-hmm. And the Ethiopians captives. Really? Young and old. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait. It says young and old. Young and old. Talk about Israel. Young and old. Go ahead. Naked and barefoot. Naked and barefoot. You see young men and older men in the classes where we stay. The young men, they behave just like the older men. The older men, they behave just like the young men because they are all the same in terms of their age. They are still kids. They are just overgrown boys with, big, with, with, with deep voices and all that because they smoke weed and all that stuff. But they are still kids. You understand? It says what? Naked and barefoot. They are naked, they are barefoot. It's going to be, it's going to get descriptive as we read on. Go ahead. Even with their buttocks uncovered, even with their what? Even with their buttocks uncovered. Even with their buttocks uncovered. Even with their buttocks uncovered. Now watch this. What do you see in, 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 our, in, our, in, in our nation today? You see young men. You see older men. You understand? So-called men. What are they doing? They've got their pants sagging. We see their underwear. Some of them don't even wear underwear. We see it all the time here. You see older ones and young ones, they all have their pants saggy. So that's an example of the, the men of this generation that Christ is talking, was talking about in Luke 7, 31 and 32. 
is as what? Read that part again, even with their what? Even with their buttocks uncovered. Uh -huh. To the shame of Egypt. Because it is a shame for a young man and all an older man to walk around naked. Because when your pants are, when you have your pants sagging, the law says you are naked. When you have your pants sagging, the law says you are naked. You understand that? You are naked. That's why it says, with their buttocks uncovered, you are naked. So guess what? Remember, they are raised up by their mothers, right? Their mothers are the ones that are raising them up. Okay? They are being groomed and counseled by their mothers. Guess what? Their mothers are teaching them to do what? They are, they, because uh, remember, their mothers are mothering them. It doesn't matter how old they are. They can be 42 years old. Remember, we're reading about um, King Ahaz, uh, Ahaziah, who, who was 42 years old and his mother was still counseling him. So the, 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 the brothers that you see today in our so-called communities, young and old, they are always walking around naked because they've got their pants sagging. Nobody's going to take you seriously like that. You understand? You sag your pants. Sometimes they wear underwear, sometimes they do not. So what does that mean? This is letting you know that, guess what? They, are, they still need mothers to do what? They still they need mothers that keep the commandments to do what? To tell them, listen, boy, you cannot dress like this. Why are you dressed like that? Why is your buttock show? They need a man to say, they need a man to correct them, like a man, to chastise them, to correct them. That's what these young men need. Whether they are 42 year old, whether it's 18 year old, the mindset is the same. That's what you're seeing in the classes where we stay. You understand? So now watch this. Give me, uh, give me first Samuel 10 verse 4. You see them by taking their pants, they smoke weed, taking their pants, walking around naked in the community, in the classes. Okay? Second Samuel 10. Yeah, that's the one right there. Second Samuel chapter 10 verse 4. Second book of Samuel chapter 10 verse 4. Read. Wherefore Hanun took David's servants mm -hmm. and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle. Go ahead. Even to their buttocks and sent them away. So now you, you see what our enemies are doing? Our enemies, they know how to humiliate us. They know how to humiliate us to go against the laws of God and to go against the Heavenly Father. Because here it says, Hanun took David's servants. He took our fathers and shaved off one of one half of their beards. Because why? According to the laws of God, give me that in Leviticus 21 verse 5. Real quick. Let's see what the law says. Because what Hanun did, he shaved off the beard of our forefathers. You understand? They were clean shaved and all that. Which is what you see the, our brothers are doing today. They have no beard. They shave it off. They make chisco on their head. They look like a boy. He's 42 years old, 42 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old. He does not have a hair on his face. That's against the laws of God. That's why they are ruled over by their mothers. It doesn't matter how old they are. Now read that. Leviticus 21 verse 5. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. Read. They shall not make boldness upon their head. Okay, come on. Meaning not just go. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Meaning a man must not shave off his beard. A man must grow a beard. That's the laws of God. Read on. No make any cuttings in their flesh. No tattoos. If you've got one, don't get another one. That the Lord is teaching us here, say, listen, you must not make bold, you must not bold your head. Don't make cheese cup on your head. Secondly, don't remove off your beard. Don't shave off your beard. Don't buy that Gillette razor. You understand? You get an aftershave and all of that. You look like a, your, your cheeks look like a baby's bottom. No, no, no. You must look like a man. You must grow a beard on your face. That's what the Lord is commanding the black man to do. So now go back to 2 Samuel 10 verse 4. Second book of Samuel chapter 10 verse 4. Read. Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards. Stop right there. So our enemies, you see what they do? They teach black men to grow up, but they don't teach black men to mature. 
that what means is that when you go to the to the men's section, whether you go to ShopRite, you go to Pick and Pay, when you go to the men's section, right, where you find the you know the beard oil, you find the perfumes, the the, the deodorants and all that, the roll ons. When you go to the to the section where they sell razor blades, you always see the picture of a black man shaved. He doesn't have a hair on his head. He does not have a beard. And they are advertising Gillette. What are they doing? Because the black men don't own Gillette. The black man does not own Gillette razor. You understand? So who owns that? The white man owns that. So, but when the black man sees another black man on the on the on on the picture on the product, yeah, Gillette, they see black men shaved. They don't have a beard. They don't have hair on their head. Guess what? Black men in the community, they're gonna do the same. They're gonna buy the Gillette razor. They're gonna shave off their beard. They're gonna use the aftershave. You see that thing? So that's what you are seeing today. So back then, that's how they did it. Today. They use Gillette. They advertise it. Go to, go to show for. So we do that. So we become one. They, they, we, we're still acting like boys because we have a boy mindset. We have a boy mentality. The most I don't want men like that. Okay? Read on. And cut off the garments in the middle. Mm -hmm. Even to their buttocks. And send them Come away. On. Okay, so it says, it says he cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and send them away. So today, the way they design the jeans for the black men, you see the way they, 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 the way they, they dress the black men now? You see black men wearing tight pants. They wear tight jeans. You see their shape. Black men wearing tight jeans. That's the gayest thing I've ever seen. But that's what's going on today. And some of them, if they don't wear tight jeans, they wear saggy pants. Their pants are saying, I mean, the ways the pants are designed, they are designed to show off their what? Their underwear. They, they call them low-cut jeans. You see the, the black man's underwear showing. You understand? So that's what they are doing. The same way what Hanun did back here is what our enemies are doing today. The way they design the jeans and all that. So they cut them, he said, they cut their, 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 their garments in the, on, on, in, in the middle even to their buttocks and send them away. So what are they doing? Because the, the black man is not in the house. Their father is not around. This is a single parent household. Guess what's going on? The woman is the one because the, our sisters are easily deceived by the media. They are easily deceived by the white man, the other nations. So now when you raise your son, you raise your son according to what you see on TV, according to what you see on Ispai according to what you see on DSTV. So the, the, the clothes you see on TV, you, that's how you dress him up. You understand? So you dress your son to wear tight jeans. You understand? To wear saggy pants. Okay? That's what they do. So our sisters, they raise these men to be overgrown boys. You see that thing? Now watch this. Because remember, because your mother is the one that's teaching you like that, watch what happens next. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 26. Because remember, you are being counseled by your mother. You're being raised by your mother. She's, she's not going to raise you to be a man. She's going to raise you to be a woman. She's going to raise you to be emotional. She's going to raise you to be in your feelings. She's not going to raise you to teach you to man up. Now watch this. Second Maccabees 7, verse 26. I'm going to show you. Some of you men, you have not let this go. Okay? Watch this. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 26. Let's start there. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 26. Go ahead. And when he had exhorted her with many words, mm -hmm. she promised him that she would cancel her son. She will cancel her son. Now, this is Antiochus. We understand, was killing many of our forefathers. Now, this is a mother, our foremother. She had seven sons, right? Watch this. Go ahead, verse 27. But she bowed herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn. Okay, you are reading too slow. Come on. Spake in her country language on this manner. Mm -hmm. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in thy womb. Go ahead. And gave thee suck three years and nourished thee. Really? 
Stop right there. Up. Hold on. So now this woman is, take, is talking to her son. He says, oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear the nine months in my womb. Meaning I carried you for nine months in my womb, in my stomach. And gave the suck three years, meaning what? I was breastfeeding you for three years and nourished thee with, with milk. So what's going on here? This is the natural order of things where a mother will breastfeed their son, right? Until to a specific age where they are no longer supposed to be sucking on their mother's breast. So keep reading. Watch what happens next. Read on. And brought thee up unto this age mm -hmm. and endured the troubles of education. So now you see what's going on here? It says he was given suck three years and he was nourished in his mother's milk, right? And he was brought up to the age. What age is this? Give me the book of Genesis 21. Get Genesis 21 real quick. When our forefather Isaac was weaned. Okay. Genesis 21, read verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 21, verse 8. Go ahead. And the child grew and was weaned. Mm -hmm. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So now our forefather Abraham made a feast for our forefather Isaac when he was no longer sucking on his mother's breast. So this is for three years, the child is sucking on his mother's breast, right? After three years, then you win the child. I mean, the child is no longer sucking on his mother's breast. Here's the problem. What I'm seeing in our community, even in the congregation, you see black men, brothers, that have not let go of their mother's breasts. They are still holding on to their mother's breast. They are into their feelings. According to the law, three years you breastfeed and after that you are weaned. No longer you're supposed to be sucking on your mother's breast. So what is happening is that now your manhood has been destroyed. Why? Because you are still a mama's boy. You are still an overgrown boy. You're still holding on to your mother's breast. So when you come into the congregation, you are expecting to be babied. You are expecting to be pampered. You're expecting that we must give you the, you, you, you're expecting that we're going to give you your mother's breast. No, we're going to give you the Bible. We're going to give you the Bible. We're going to teach you how to be a man, how to man up. You understand? Stand up like a man so the Lord can instruct you. We're going to teach you. We're going to groom you. We will guide you. We'll teach you and make sure that you grow in this truth and become a man. But a lot of you, you don't want to grow up. You're still holding on to your mother's breast. The only breast that you're supposed to be holding on to is this Bible. The milk that you're supposed to be sucking out of the breast is the laws of God. That's it. We are not going to baby. A lot of you, you like to throw tantrums. You understand? You don't know how to deal with situations. You throw tantrums because you still think you're still sucking on your mother's breast. We're not doing that this day. We are not going to move like that in this congregation because we see that our nation is in a state of emergency. We must build our nation back up with the laws of God. Understand that thing. Read that verse again, verse 8. The book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse 8. Read. And the child grew and was weaned. Uh -huh. Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. You see that thing? So now, watch this. Give me Luke 11, verse 27. So because, because some, a lot of you, you grew up without fathers, okay? You were raised up by your mother. But when you come into this truth, the Lord says, I'm going to set fathers over you. I'm going to set elders over you to teach you and guide you. You understand? So, but guess what? When you come in, you are corrected. You are guided. You are given counsel. Don't be emotional when the correction comes. Don't be emotional when counsel comes, because that counsel that it comes is not going to be nice. Why? Because a lot of the times is what? It's medicine. Medicine doesn't taste good, but it's good for you. But it's what you need. You need the medicine. You go to the hospital, the doctor prescribes medicine for you. Some medicine is better, but it's good for you. It's going to heal you. You don't tell the doctor and say, I don't want the medicine. The medicine is too bitter. You don't do that. But when you come into this truth, into the, into the into the, the congregation. When we give you the laws of God, they are painful to receive, but they are good for you. So you can grow up. You understand? Stop being a boy. Okay, watch this. Luke 11 verse 27. The 
the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Read. Blessed is the womb that bare thee, uh -huh. and the paps which thou hast sucked. You see what this woman is saying? This woman is telling Christ, she said, listen, she's pushing feminism on the black Messiah. It said, and said, blessed is the womb that bear thee and the peps which thou hast sucked, meaning what? We must worship the womb of your mother. You must worship the breast of your mother that you've been sucking for three years. You see what this woman is telling Christ to do? This woman is telling Christ to worship his mother. He's telling Christ to worship the woman. That is not in the Bible. That is against the laws of God. Worshiping the woman. That is against God's commandments. Because he's letting you know right there. Watch what Christ the black Messiah says. Read on. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You see what Christ said? Christ said, yeah, rather, he says, no, I don't want to hear that. To hell with what you're saying. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. What did Christ was telling? Christ was telling this woman to say, listen, we are not going to worship the woman. We are going to worship the word, the most High God. Blessed are they that hear the word of God that's coming out right now and they obey, they apply it when it comes out. That's what we're reading here. You understand? So a lot of you brothers, you, you grew up, there was no father around. We understand that a lot of us, a lot of many of our brothers and sisters, the brothers, they grow up without mothers in the house. I mean, without fathers. So, but the Lord says, don't worry, you lost fathers. I'm going to send fathers to you. I'm going to send you into a congregation where you're going to see men, you're going to meet men. Those men will teach you and guide you according to that saith the Lord. You understand? Because guess what? But a lot of you, you still don't want to let go of that, your mother's breast because you are being taught by, you were taught by your mother or the women in your life that you used to interact with in the world, they taught you to worship the woman. You understand? So now you are you're still holding on to your, to, to, to your mother's breast. You worship the woman so much so that when we correct you like a man, you become emotional, you get mad. That's simple as hell. That's, the Lord is not looking for those type of men. The Lord does not, the most high when you become overly emotional, the Lord, guess what? The Lord will do away with you. The Lord is not looking for men like that. That's why Christ has to talk about the men of this generation, that they are overgrown babies. They don't want to grow up. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. But the men of today, they worship the woman. They are emotional. They are into their feelings. They don't want to get married. They sleep around. They pop babies. They don't want to be fathers. They don't want to be husbands. They're still playing the field. Those are not men. Those are boys. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 26. Because when you are taught to worship the woman because you have been raised by your mother, when you come into the truth, you still refuse instruction. Here's what happens. Wisdom of Solomon 14 26. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 26. Go ahead. Disquieting of good men. Mm-hmm. Forgetfulness of good turns, Read. defiling of souls, mm -hmm. changing of kind, Come on. disorder in marriages, adultery and shamelessness and cleanness. And shameless uncleanness. Okay, I need you to pay attention. It says disquieting of good men. Disquieting means what? Destruction of good men. You understand? Because the good men, we don't have good men. The, the, well, rather, I'll put it like this. The black women don't see good men in the community because good men are married to good women, okay? They are there. Don't, don't get it twisted. They are there. Good, women, good men exist, but they are taken by good women. Watch this. It says forgetfulness of good tense because the good tense is the Bible. The Bible will teach you how to walk. Defiling of souls, meaning your mind will be defiled. Once the man is destroyed, guess what? There's going to be forgetfulness of good things, meaning everybody's going to follow where this man is going. Meaning what? If the man's mind is not right, everybody's going to follow the wrong path, which is where the man is going. Because you destroy the leader, everything gets destroyed. You understand? 
And that's what has happened to our community today, so-called. Defiling of souls, changing of kind. That part right there. You see that part right there? It says changing of kind. I want you to read that verse again. Read verse 26 again. Changing of kind. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Uh -huh. It's quieting of men, forgetfulness of good terms, defiling of souls, changing of kind. Stop right there. Changing of kind, changing of kind. Changing of kind goes into what? Goes into role reversals. Where men become women, women become men. That is what has happened to our nation today. The man is playing the role of a woman. The woman is playing the role of a man. Even the way they dress. Men dress like women. Women are dressing like men. Men are acting like women. They carry, they carry women's handbag. They are weak. They, are, they don't want to be in the front. They want to be in the back. The black woman wants to want the black man to carry a handbag. We see it all the time when we go to the, to the malls. We go to the taxis. The black man carries the woman's handbag. But no, oh my God, oh shame, he's such a gentleman. No, that's a simp. That is a simp right there. A black man is not supposed to be carrying a woman's handbag. Sister, you bought your handbag, you carry your own handbag. But that's what you are seeing today. You see black men carrying a woman's handbag, right? Number one. Two, the black woman is wearing pants. Who's wearing a cigarette like this? Or who's wearing a neck? That's what they do now. Hmm? We a bob cut. That's what you see. And the black man is carrying a baby who push a troll. That, isn't that what you see? That's what we see all the time. The black man will be carrying the baby. You understand? As we really, really, that bag, I'm a lady. You know that bag that carries nappies and all that? You see the black man carrying that, pushing troll. The black woman has got her hands in her pocket, wearing a jean, wearing pants. You understand? Who's wearing a cigarette? That's what you are seeing this day. Changing of kind, meaning the roles are going to be reversed in the black community, so-called community. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. We coming back here. It says changing of kind. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, the last verse. Let's get that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 29. Come on. Lo, this only have I found, mm -hmm. that God has made, a, has made man upright. God has created man to be upright. God created the black man to be upright, meaning what? To be a man, according to the Bible. God has created the black man to be upright, to keep God's commandments. Watch this. Go ahead. But they have sought out many inventions. Now they've decided to go against the order of God's creation. Now they decided to switch the roles now. Now the black man wants to be the black woman. The black woman wants to be the black man. The roles are now reversed. Why? Because the laws of God have been pushed to the side. The black woman envies the position of the, black, the man. She wants to be in the front. The black man now, he wants to be what? He wants to be the woman. That's why now you've got stay at home, stay at home dead. What is that? Stay at home dead. Meaning the father is in the house taking care of the children while the woman goes to work. That's what you are seeing today. It's happening in our, in our so-called community. In the black individuality. That's what, because we don't have black communities. We've got black individualities. Understand that? So read that verse again, verse 29. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 29. Go ahead. Lo, this only have I found, mm -hmm. that God hath man made, hath made man upright. Go ahead. But they have sought out many inventions. But they have sought out many inventions. The many inventions is what? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14. Read verse 26 again. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 26. Watch this. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Read. Disquieting of good men. Mm -hmm. Forgetfulness of good terms. Read. Defiling of souls. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. Meaning roles are reversed in our nation. 
There's role reversals going on. Now I'm going to show you something. Give me Romans 1 verse 25. Romans 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Because remember, when you are raised by your mother, because a lot of brothers, they, they, are, they were raised by their mothers. So when they come into the truth, they don't want to let go of their mother's breast. They're still holding on to it. They're still holding on to that diaper. They are still holding on to that, to that pampas. No, you must let it go. Let go of the pampas. Let go of your mother's breast. It's time to be a man. It's time to man up. Read that in Romans 1 verse 25. Because when you are raised by your mother, your father's not around, guess what? You are not going to be a man. You are going to be emotional. It's a fact. The Bible says that. Okay? And here's what's going to happen to your spirit. Your soul is going to be defiled. And your, the way you behave as you're supposed to be a man, you're now going to be, act like a woman. Okay? Read, read that. Romans 1, verse 25. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 25. Read. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Mm -hmm. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator? Read. Who is blessed forever? Amen. So the apostle Paul is making a rhetorical statement. He says, who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who did that? Our enemies have done that. They changed the truth of God into a lie. What is the truth of God? The laws of God. So they changed the laws of God into a lie, meaning they are going against the Bible. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Now the black man is taught to worship the black woman. That was going on. The black man now today is being taught to worship the black woman. Because think about it like this, right? A lot of the times in the media, in the news, you see black men that are saying that they are told or no, they are abusing the black woman. I'm not saying that's not true. That's true. You see black men are physically abusing black women. Okay. But do you know that there's actually cases where black women are physically abusing black men? You don't see that in the news. You don't see that in the newspaper. You don't read about that on the social media platforms where black women are abusing physically, emotionally, and financially abusing black men. They take their children from them. They don't want black men to come and see their kids. They say, no, I don't want you to see my kids, but I don't want you to see, I'm not going to allow you to see my children, but they still want money at the end of the month. Yeah, they, that's what's going on in our communities today. Black women abusing the system to, to punish black men. That's what you see, but you don't read about that. You understand that? So now, okay, read that thing for me again. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Uh -huh. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Read. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who Go is ahead. blessed forever. Amen. So now this is going into what? This is going into idolatry. This is going into idolatry where black men, because they are raised by their mothers, they are taught to worship the woman. They bow down to the woman. It doesn't matter how abused the woman is abusing them. They are taught, you know, you listen, just do whatever it is that the woman tells you to do, just do it. If you want, I remember there was this woman, Parakiman, Mini Kamini, right? He was getting married to that um, so-called colored boy. And the father advised the son-in-law to say, he said, listen, you want to have a happy marriage. Just agree to everything that she says and wants. That's what the father said. Mini Jamini's father said that to his son-in-law. He said, if you want to, listen, everything, she's right, you are wrong. That's what he has advised him. You see how old he is, an old man, but he's a simp. You understand? He's still a boy. He's an overgrown old man. That's what he is. It doesn't matter what his age is, but he's still a boy. He's, he's got a boy mindset. He's got a, he's got a boy mentality. You understand? So that's what we read. The Apostle Paul is going to break this thing down. Now, read verse, read verse 27. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 27. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 26. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. Uh-huh. For even their women 
to change the natural use into that which is against nature. You see what happens when idolatry enters into the mix? Idolatry, worshipping of idols. Who's the idol in this instance? The black woman. She's the idol. And black men are taught in the media everywhere to worship their mothers, to worship their wives. You understand? And to worship their daughters. That's what's going on today. So now it says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, meaning disgusting affections. When you worship your, your mother, you worship your wife. That's a vile affection. That's an unnatural affection. It says, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Now black women want to be men. They want to take up the position of the men. That's why they dress like men. They drink more than the men. They even smoke and hold the cigarette and stand like men. That's what we're seeing in the classes where we stay, where we live. You understand? Watch this. Read on. Verse 27. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men. The men also. Remember, the woman has changed her natural use into that which is against nature. Now the black woman has taken on the role of the black man. Now let's see what the black man has done. Because guess what? When, but remember, we were reading in Second Chronicles that Ahaziah's mother was counseling him. And when he counseled him, when she counseling him, then guess what? Oh. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, right? They are going to counsel you to become a woman or become an homose a homosexual. That's what's going to happen. That's the outcome. When a woman is ruling over you, you either going to be what you're going to, you, they teach you to worship the woman you understand? Guess what? If not, you're going to what? You become gay. You become a homosexual. You become effeminate. You don't know how to relate to other black men. That's what the Lord is saying. Now read that. Verse 27. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 27. Go ahead. Likewise also the men. Mm -hmm. Giving the natural use of the woman. You see that thing? Because they are being raised by black women. Either you're going to worship the woman, you understand? It says, then all oh, the men will do what? They're going to leave the natural use of the woman. Meaning what? They no longer want to deal with the woman anymore. Either they're going to worship the woman or they're going to hate the black woman. Two things. When the man is not in the house, when the black man, there's no male figure in the household or the male figure in that boy's life, guess what's going to happen? She is going to be taught to worship the woman or he's going to be taught to become a homosexual. He's going to despise the woman because how the woman was treating him while he was growing up. Okay, go ahead. Burned in their last toward, burned in their last one toward another. You see what happens? Then they become what? Homosexuals. Look at Somis. Okay, go ahead. Men with men. Walking that which is unseemly. Meaning unnatural, go ahead. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. You see that thing? Meaning they're going to get the judgment that is good for them if they don't repent. The Lord is telling you that if women are ruling over you, guess what's going to happen? You're either going to, talk, going to worship the woman or you're going to hate the woman. When you hate the woman, you become a homosexual. You worship the woman, guess what? you're not going to let go of your mother's breast. Guess what happens when you get married? That woman that you marry will be a reflection of your mother. You're going to expect that woman to mother you, but you're still going to expect that woman to sex you too. You see that thing? Shameless uncleanness. Everything just become messed up. You understand? Thou as a so-called man, you're just confused. You are a walking bundle of confusion, which is what against God's commandments. Watch what happens now. Give me Deuteronomy 23 verse 1. Because guess what? I get it, the black woman, when you are taught to worship the black woman, what, what, one of the things is that you will worship the woman or you'll despise the woman. And when you worship your mother, because you are taught to worship your mother by your mother, I guess she's raising you by herself. So she's teaching you to worship her. When she's teaching you to worship her, you become a woman. Here's what happens to you. Deuteronomy 23 verse 1. Watch this. Here's what happens to the black man now. Okay, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 1. Go ahead. He that is wounded in the stones. 
He that is what? He that is wounded in the stones. He that is wounded in the stones. The stones is talk about your testicles, your bones. He that is wounded in his testicles. Go ahead. Or has his privy member cut off. Stop right there. So you are wounded in the stones. You are wounded or your balls have been cut off. Who did this? Your mother has done this. I agree your mother is raising you up to worship her. She's raising you up to become effeminate, to be in your feelings. So when your mother is raising you up like that because there's no male figure in the house, the law says you are going to be wounded in your stones, meaning what? Your balls are going to be what? Malfun they're going to malfunction or they are going to be as though they've been cut off. Now, you practically a woman. You see that thing? So your mother will raise you up so much so that you'll forget that you are a man because your balls are going to be wounded or it will be as though your balls have been cut off. Where are they going? They are in your mother's purse. That's why now, when you're supposed to now get married, your mother is going to approve of the type of woman that you must meet. She must like her. She must get along with her and all of that. Guess what? Guess she's dictating. She's even controlling your sex life. Your mother will control your sex life when you get married. Understand it. She's going to choose a woman that is going to control you like she's controlling you. And a lot of men, a lot of brothers, they are in situations like that. You understand? When your mother's raising you up, these are the things that are going to happen to you. You're going to be wounded in the stones or it will be as though your balls have been cut off. Understand that. Go ahead. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The Lord cannot use you. The Lord will not be able to use you. Understand that. The Lord cannot use you. You must man up first. You must go and demand your stones back. You must demand your privy members back because they've been cut off. That's what the Lord is saying. Hmm. Watch this. Now, think about it like this, right? You, you raise up by your mother. You're either going to worship her or you're going to despise her. And when you worship her, she's going to raise you up to become a what? To become a eunuch. She's going to cut your balls off. Spiritual. You understand? They are going to be malfunctioning. And the opposite is that you're going to despise the women and you're going to go up and lay with a man and have somebody blow your back out. Now, Another thing is, here's what happens now when you get married. Here's what happens when you get married, right? Give me wisdom of Solomon 14, 26. Let's go back there. I'm going to show you something. Okay. Either you're going to worship your mother while your previous members are going to be cut off, or you're going to hate women. You're going to start sleeping with men. You're going to become a homosexual. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 26. Watch this thing right here. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. It's quieting of good men, mm -hmm. but forgetfulness of good turns, right. violent of souls, right. changing of kind, uh -huh. disorder in marriages. Stop right there. What? Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. So, guess what? As a brother, your mother's the one you've been worshipping your mother. You've been taught to worship women. Guess what? You're going to have disorder in your marriage when you get married. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. You are going to have disorder in your marriage. Your marriage will not be in order according to the laws of God. Your marriage will not be according to this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Your marriage is not going to be in order according to God. Your marriage will be in disorder. Okay? Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Come on. But I would have you know that mm -hmm. the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. Read. The head of the woman is the man. The head of the black woman is the black man. So God is giving us his divine order of how we must be as a nation. God, Christ, man, and woman. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is the heavenly father. So this is the order. This is how we set our nation in order. This is how we set our houses and our, our nation in order. The man being the head, 
the woman in complete subjection to the black man. You understand? The children in complete subjection to the father and the mother at the command of the father. Give me that in Genesis 18, verse 18. Let's give it, in, let's get some examples of, of an alpha male. Our forefather, Abraham, he was an alpha. He was not a wimp. He was not a gentleman. A gentleman is a simp because gentlemen, they carry women's handbags. Gentlemen are taught to worship the black woman. Gentlemen, they cry. They want to be hugged. Gentlemen, they what? They sleep in a fetal position with their thumb, with their thumb in their mouth. They sleep in a fetal position like a child with their thumb in their mouth, asking for a woman's pillow. That's what they do. Those are gentlemen. And alpha male, on the other hand, this is what they do. Genesis 18, verse 18. Watch this. I'm going to show you a difference between a simp and a gentleman and an alpha male. Watch this. Read that. Genesis 18, verse 18. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 18. Go ahead. Seeing that Abraham surely, excuse me, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Read. Right. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations of the earth that will be blessed in Abraham is talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 19 now. For I know him that he will command his children and he his household. What? That he will command his children. He will command. He's not going to ask. He's going to set his house in order according to the scriptures. That's an alpha male. But a simp, a gentleman is a simp. They are the ones that are going to have disorder in their marriages because why? They were taught to worship the woman. They were taught to bow down to the black woman. You understand? And while in, in, indirectly having their balls cut off, you understand, by their mother. So basically your mother is spiritually castrating you so that when you get married, you'll have disorder in your marriage. Whenever there's marital problems in your marriage, in your house, you're going to run back to your mother because that's how she conditioned you. Not based on what God says. Now read verse 19 again. The book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. You see that thing? He will command his children, meaning our forefather Abraham, the Lord says he knows him, that he's going to command his children, and his household after him. His household goes into what? His wife, his children, and the servants that was in his house. He says, he commanded them to what? To walk after his footsteps. Read on. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Uh -huh. To do justice and judgment. You see that thing? He is going to teach his house, his wife, He's going to teach his wife, his children, and the servants in his house to do what? He's going to teach them to keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and just judgment. The Lord says he knows our forefather Abraham will do this thing. Our forefather Abraham was an alpha male. You understand? When you men need to grow up, you, mu you must become alpha males. You understand? You need to get your balls back from your mother's purse. You need to get your balls back from your, ma your wife's purse. It's time to get your balls back. Understand it. Okay. Now watch this. Give me. Give me the book of. Um, give me the book of 1 Peter 3 verse 7. Start at verse 6. 1 Peter 3 verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 6. I'm going to give an example that our forefather Abraham commanded his household. Watch this. 1 Peter 3 verse 6. Let's start there. You know what? Start of verse 5. Start of verse 5 right there. Watch this. Hmm. You know what? Start of verse 4. Let's start at verse 4. Hmm. First book of Peter. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Uh -huh. In that which is not corruptible. Go ahead. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Uh -huh which is in the sight of God of great price. So now he's talking about what? He's talking about the character of a righteous sister. The character of a righteous sister says, her mindset must be the hidden man of the heart, which is who? The mindset of your husband, because the mindset of your husband 
is the mindset of the law, Jesus the Christ. It says, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek, meaning submissive, and quiet spirit, meaning what? You don't have a big black mouth because that's what's going on today. A lot of sisters that are unmarried is because they have big mouths. You cannot keep your mouth shut. You talk to the, your, your husband, you talk to your father like you're crazy. You talk to your father like you, you are a man talking to another man. That's why a lot of sisters today, they don't, they are not married, but they have kids, but they are being sexed by these men. Guess what? The man will sex you, will leave you. You understand? You become a baby mama. Why? Because you, you think you are a man. So you act like one. You see that thing right there? So read that verse again. Okay, come on. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 4. Read. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let it in be the that, hidden man of the heart. Go ahead. In that which is not corruptible. Uh-huh. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Read. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me Sarah 26 verse 14. I'm going to show you something. It says, um, the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. This is the character of a righteous woman, a virtuous sister. Read that. Sarah 26, read verse 14. Okay. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 14. Mm -hmm. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent and loving woman, that's a gift of the Lord right there. When you have a silent and loving wife, you have a gift from God. But if you have a loud mouth, you understand, and hateful woman, you have a, that's a gift from Satan. That's not a gift of the Lord. So as a sister, you want to be a gift of the Lord, you must learn to be quiet. You must learn to, to be feminine. You must not be a feminist. You must learn to be feminine. You must what? Don't be acting like a man. Don't want him to behave like a man. You understand? Because you're not going to make it. You're not going to get no husband. You're going to get a nigga who's going to sex you and leave you pregnant. You understand? And you taking care of that baby by yourself. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Go ahead. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Because that mind is well instructed according to the laws of God. She's instructed in God's commandments. Okay, read on. A shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace. You see that thing? A shame-faced and a faithful woman is a double grace. So that means a shameless woman and a faithless woman, that's not a double grace. That right there, that's the gift of Satan, which is death. Hell, confusion, you understand? Go ahead. And her continent mind cannot be valued. And a disciplined mind cannot be valued. You cannot put a price on a sister like that. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, now go back to First Peter 3 now. First Peter 3, read verse 5. First Peter 3, verse 5. Watch this. Okay, come on. Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For well, after this manner is the old time, the holy woman. In also. the old time. In the old time. Read that right. Read it again. Excuse me, sir. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy woman also. Mm -hmm. Who trusted in God. Come on. Adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that thing right there? Now, the apostle Peter is taking you back. He says, in, he says for the, after this manner, in the old time, meaning what? From the time of Genesis, the holy women also who trusted in God. How did they trust in God? He says they adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. So if you trust in God, you're going to subject yourself completely to your husband. When you don't submit to your husband or you don't submit to the leadership according to the Bible, you don't trust in the Lord. You don't follow instruction. You don't follow counsel. You do whatever the hell you want. You don't trust in the Lord. That's what the Bible is saying right there. Go ahead. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, mm -hmm. calling him Lord, 
Calling him what? Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. Even as Sarah. Now, the Apostle Peter is giving an example of how our foremother Sarah addressed our forefather Abraham. He didn't call our forefather Abraham by his first name. He didn't do that. She did not do that. She called our father, our forefather Abraham, my Lord. That's what we read in there. But today our sisters, they get upset. They call their, their, their husbands by their first name. That's disrespect. They call their, especially I see the daughters also, you know, young girls, they don't know how to talk to their fathers. They disrespect their fathers. Why? Because their mothers, well, guess what they do? They disrespect their fathers as their husbands. So you disrespect your husband, your daughter will dis disrespect her father. And not only that, she's going to disrespect her husband when she gets married, if she does get married. Now you've got a monster on your head. You understand? So what we're reading here is, now, imagine now, I'm going to deal with that, with, uh, with a married couple that raised that raise a simp. Okay? Here says, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Hmm. That's an honor. That's an honor right there. Go ahead. Whose daughters he are. Uh -huh. As long as he do well. Read. And are not afraid of any amazement. You see that thing? It says, whose daughters he are. Because you sisters, you are the daughters of Sarah. It says, as long as you do well, as long as you keep God's commandments, you trust in God by being in subjection to your own husband, he says, you're not going to be afraid with any amazement. You're not going to be amazed or surprised when this Bible goes out. How it's written, how it's taught, how it's delivered to you. You're not going to be surprised because you know what, he, what you know the role that God gave you. You know the role that the Lord has given to the black man. Everybody in their own role, proper roles. Because marriage is not a partnership. Let me repeat myself in case I start. Marriage is not a partnership. I know I'm going into marriage again. Let me pull out a little bit, okay? I'll come back next time when I'm going, in, I'm going over marriage. Now, let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, okay? Wisdom of Solomon, I wanted to, I went over this because I wanted to explain to you, show you um, the, the marriage that was, was set up according to the laws of God and in contrast to what? Having disorder in marriages. Your marriage being in disorder because of what? Because you as the black man, you were taught and raised up and groomed to worship the woman. So now when you get married, guess what? You're going to marry somebody that is just like your mother. Somebody that is going to control you. You understand? Control the way you think, how you dress, how you speak, and all of that. That woman is going to run you. You're not going to run the house. She's going to run you. You're going to be running circles around you. You understand? Now watch this. Well, she's going to run circles around you, rather. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 31 verse 22. These are, these, these are marriages that are in disarray in our communities today. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. This is what's going on today. This is a result when the black man is raised up to, uh, to worship the woman. Here's the results of it. Okay. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. Go ahead. How long wilt thou go about Oh, thou backsliding daughter. Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall what? A woman shall compass a man. A woman will rule over the man. That's a new thing in the earth now. The new thing that the Lord has created in the earth is that the woman will rule over the man. The woman will be on top of the man. In marriages. You understand? So now, notice, you raised up by your mother, your mother is ruling over you. Your mother is counseling you to do evil, to be a simp. You understand? To be an emotional black man, to be a bundle of emotions. You cannot take correction. You take any, everything to you is a joke. You don't take anything seriously. You understand? You don't understand the seriousness of why you were called into this truth. Because you think this is a game. You think this is something to play with. We are at war. Understand that thing. Now read that again, verse 22. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Read. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Read. 
For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. That's a new thing that the Lord will create in these last days. Where women will compass a man, they'll rule over the man. They'll be in the front because the black man is scared. He's afraid to take, to take hold of this Bible and what? And learn how to be responsible and accountable to his nation. You understand? So that will, what will, that's, that's what's going to happen today. Now, I'm going to show you something. Because I know some of you forgot already. Now, give me to Tommy 23 verse 1. Because when your mother is grooming you, is teaching you, is raising you up, counseling you. Because she's defiled in her mind. She don't use the Bible. She don't go to the elders to teach her to, to allow her son to be groomed like a man. Here's what your mother will do to you spiritually. Deuteronomy 23 verse 1. Read that. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off go ahead. shall enter into the congregation of the Lord. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So this is what happens when your mother wounds you in the stones because you are still sucking on your mother's breath. Here's two things going on. You cannot let go of your mother's breast and you have allowed her to spiritually castrate you. Now you get married, right? Watch what happens when you are married because now your marriage is in disorder. Is your, you, are, you, have, you have a disorder. Your marriage is, is not run according to the laws of God. There's disorder in your marriage. There's chaos in your marriage. And there's chaos in your marriage. Your children will be defiled. Your children are not going to know who to follow. Watch this. Give me to Tommy 25 verse 11. Because your mother has groomed you, your mother has taught you to worship her, to worship her breast. You understand? To worship the womb that bear you. Watch what happens when you get married. Here's what your wife will do. Your wife will take over from your mother. Understand that? Because you notice, you know, as if you, if you want to know that you worship your mother, you worship the woman, your mother has groomed you, even though there's a father in the house, because sometimes you find that there's a father in the house, but the woman is running the show. The sons, they worship the mother. The sons, they always cite, they always agree with the mother more than they agree with the father. It happens all the time in our community. You find that whenever the father speaks, the father is looked at as the enemy by the sons. But when the mother speaks, the sons, they listen. Guess what? They don't realize that Jezebel is running the show. They don't understand that. And they don't understand that they are being groomed to become an Ahab. They don't get it. They don't see it. You understand? Read that. You probably 25 verse 11. Here's what happens when your wife takes over. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 verse 11. Read. When men strive together one with another, uh -huh. and the wife of the one doth near to, for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, uh -huh. and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets. I want you to stop right there. Here's what's going on. You've got two brothers. They are having a disagreement, right? It says, and the wife of the one draweth near to for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smited him. Brothers are having a disagreement. Now they are fighting. It says, the wife of a sim. I can remember the wife is actually your mother. She's represent your mother in your life now. You understand? It just so happens that she is a mother to you. Not only that, she also, she's a wife. She's not a wife. She's a mother to you. You understand? And she's also sleeping with you. You see that thing? She's your mother. And she sleeps with you at the same time. Now, here's what happens now. when Because I agree you don't know how to resolve conflicts. You are a sim. You are emotional. You are not a man. You are a boy. Now you're having a disagreement with the brother. The brother smacks you in the face. You understand? Like a female dog. Now, it says, your wife sees this. He now, because the wife knows that you don't know how to fight. I guess she's the one that's running you in the house. She's the one that controls you. She's the one that tells you to sit down and shut up. Is she, to sit down and shut up. She eats, your, she, she eats a dinner on your head. You understand? She knows that you don't know how to fight. You are not mad enough to actually stand up and fight. She comes to your rescue because she's your mother now. She's not coming as your wife. 
She's coming as your mother. It says what? You see, look at how she delivers. He says, and put forth her hand and take it him by the secrets, meaning what? By the balls, by his rod. So now, I guess she's used to doing this. Remember, the, the way she castrates you as the man, I guess when you are married to this woman, you are married to this woman, she, she fights your battles for you on your behalf. You understand? You and you, and I, you sit in the background, she comes to the front. So guess what? The way she delivers you out of that brother's hands, she, she catches him by the secrets, mind, by his balls. I guess she already has yours in her purse. So she has no problem taking that man's balls too. You see this thing? That's what's going on in our communities today, in our individualities today, because there's no communities in the Black Nation. Okay? So guess what? Your wife, you married to your wife, and she knows when you are a mama's baby, you call your mother all the time. Every day, no, you know, today I, was, I spoke to my mother. Hold on, okay? So how's your mother doing? No, my mother's fine and all that. The next day, same thing. You know, I was talking to my mother today. Then there's a pattern that is emerging here. Every day when you're talking to your mother. Hmm? Guess what? Brothers do that all the time. They always want their phone with their mother. You see that thing? Those are not men. The Lord cannot use those type of men yet. They are not ready. They need to focus. They need to come in. They need to obey and, ab and abide by these laws. Understand that? Now read that thing again, verse 11. I'm going to make a point now. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, is 11. Mm -hmm. when, my, when men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draws near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secret. He goes, guess what? Your wife, I get it, she, she, she's used to, she, 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 she has your, your balls in her pants. She owns them. They belong to her. That's why when you're supposed to have sex, you must beg her for sex because she's got your balls. She's the one that controls when you, when you want to have sex. When you want to have sex, you must ask, you must beg. She decides, okay, not now. No, I'm not feeling it right now. No, I'm tired. No, I have a headache. I have a this. No, wait. So a lot of you brothers, you're going to get married. Some of you, you've dealt with this in, your, in, the, in, the, in the world before. You'll be begging women for what? You, you begging your wife for sex. That's crazy. You have to ask. Before you have sex, you must ask her to give you your balls back. Then you have sex. But you see, I'm going to show you. I want you to see the pattern here. Your mother's the one that she grooms you. Guess what? Your privy member will be cut off. She spiritually castrates you. Guess what? When you get married, your wife is your mother, but she also sexes you. You know how she calms you down as a simp? Because simps are emotional. You understand? Simps, they are miserable. Simps, listen, they are not, they are unstable. So the, the only way for your wife to calm you down, guess what she does? She knows, she, she basically controls your sex life. That's how she castrates you. She got your balls in her purse. I have to repeat this over and over again because some of you, that's how you think. That's, your mindset is like that. You need to repent from that day. Now watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings 21. You know, this is my favorite. Okay, let's get an example of where a woman was fighting a man's battles on his behalf. Watch this. 1 Kings 21. We want to start at verse 1. This is Ahab now. This simp right here. Watch this. First Kings 21 verse 1. Read that for me. Okay, come on. First book of Kings chapter 21 verse 1. Read. And it came to pass after these things. Mm -hmm. Then Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel. Read. Hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. So now you have our forefather Naboth. He had a vineyard. Okay, so it was adjacent to um, Ahab's palace. That's why it says hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So now Ahab is going to go and, and he wants Naboth, his neighbor's vineyard. Watch what happens. Go ahead. 
And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, mm -hmm. because it is near unto my house. Wait. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. You see what he's saying? He says, give me your vineyard. Okay. I will say, I'm going to give you a better vineyard than this one. Or I can buy it from you. That's the proposal. Read, read on. And Naboth said unto Ahab, the Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. He says, listen, this is the inheritance that was given to be my, my father. So therefore, I cannot give you my vineyard. Okay, go ahead. And, have, and Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because mm -hmm. of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. Go ahead. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not eat bread. Now, I want to stop right there. Watch this. You see the character of this man? This man right here is a wimp. This is the same type of man that Christ was talking about in Luke 7, 31 and 32. That what can I liken the men of this generation and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. You understand? They like to throw tantrums. So what you are seeing here, Naboth is coming back to his house. He says he's heavy and he was displeased. He was emotionally, he was upset. And he went to bed. He went straight to sleep. He didn't want to eat. This is not a man right here. This is a wimp. This is an overgrown boy. He's still wearing his diapers. You understand? Guess what? He's going to wait for mommy to change his diaper and give him food so that he can tell his mother, which is his wife, what happened at the, what happened at the preschool? What happened at the, what happened at Kupra Goku High School? He's going to, now he's going to have to be cuddled so he can explain himself what happened. Watch this. Go ahead. And he, the book of, first book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him. Stop right and, there. Jezebel, his wife. And Jezebel, his wife, came to him. So now, when you read verse 4, you would think that this is a child because he is one. But you're not expecting that verse 5, they're going to say Jezebel, his wife. You're expecting to, them to say Jezebel, his mother. Because, yes, this is his wife, but his mother. But that's his mother. He married his mother. Not his literal mother, but spiritually, he got married to somebody that was just like his mother. To mother him, to rule over him because he's weak. You understand? Read. And said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad? Mm -hmm. That thou eatest no bread? And Go he ahead. said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, mm -hmm. if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. You see what's happening here? I'm going to show you something. Remember, Jezebel is asking, he says, why is thy spirit so sad? Why are you mad for? Why are you so sad? What is wrong with you? He says that you don't even want to eat. What kind of a character is this? This is a weak man. This is not a man right here. But he was a king. You understand? So now the, the child is explaining to his mother, or oh, excuse me, his wife, that listen, I wanted this brother's vineyard, and he said no. He says, I'm not gonna give you, you I'm not gonna give you my vineyard. Hold this. Go back to Luke 732, because I know some of you forgot already. Let's bring this to your remembrance once again. Luke 7, verse, read verse 31 again, 31 and 32. I'm gonna show you what Christ is saying and what a how Ahab is behaving. Watch this. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 31. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Where well, unto then shall I liken the men of this generation? Mm -hmm. And to what are they like? Go ahead. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you 
and you have not danced. Mm -hmm. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. That's exactly what Ahab did. I get Ahab piped unto Nabot the Jezreelite, and Nabot didn't dance to his tune. He says, We have mourned to you and you have not wept. He mourned to Naboth, the Jezreelite. He didn't what? He didn't weep with him. Now he realized that he's not being the center of attention because some of you brothers, you like to be the center of attention. That, that's a weak, that's a character flaw. You understand? When you throw tantrums, you do childish things, you see, you act like a child, you want to be the center of attention, you are not ready to be a defender or a savior for your nation. You're not ready. You are not ready. Understand that. You have to let go of your mother's breast. You understand? Yeah, you must do that. You must let that thing go. Get rid of the pampas, okay? And put on some big boy pants. Put your boots on. Then the Lord will advise you, okay? So go back to 1 Kings 21. 1 Kings 21, read verse 7 now. Watch this. Listen to what Jezebel, his wife, says. Read. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 7. Go ahead. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Do you not govern the kingdom of Israel? Are you not the king? Nigga, you run this. That's what Jezebel is pumping him up. Watch this. Go ahead. Arise and eat bread. Mm, hold on. You see what you see what you see what his wife is doing? He says, Arise and eat bread. He says, Aren't you the king? You the king. Oh, who's a big boy? Aren't you a big boy? Give mommy a kiss. Here's the food. That's what we're seeing here. That's what's going on right here. And this is not his mother, this is his wife. But he's really married to his mother. Okay, go ahead. Arise and eat bread and let uh -huh. them be married. Read. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. I want you to read that right. It says, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Jezebel is saying, don't worry, I got this. Because the first is now he's buttering, he's buttering his child, her child, because this is not a husband, this is not a man. It says, does not know, now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thine heart be made. Okay, smile for, smile for money. You see, money made your favorite. That's what's going on here. By the way, this is not mother and son. This is wife and husband. But I'm showing you if the results of you worshiping the woman, your mother, this is the result. You're going to marry the same woman who's going to mother you. The only difference is that your mother spiritually castrated you. You understand? She took your balls off. Now, when you get married to your wife, which is your mother, she's physically going to take them off. How? She's going to sex you. The reason why you're not going to leave that demon is because she sexes you good. A lot of men that you see, they take crap from the woman. You understand? They let women abuse them, disrespect them. Is because this woman knows how to make it clap. The man don't leave. He's holding on to a scorpion. You see that thing? Read again, read again. Come on. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 7. Go ahead. Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. Mm -hmm. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. You see that thing? Now she's being a man now, because she's always been one. This is not a woman, this is a man. Okay, this is a man right here. Now she's coming to her husband's rescue. Just like you saw when we read in Deuteronomy 25 verse 11, when a sister, when a wife saw his high husband having a fight with another brother, she got involved, she got into the middle of it. You see it in the communities all the time. A black man will argue with another black man, whether in the taxi, whether on the train, whether in the malls. Guess who's going to end up getting in the middle of the fight? The black woman. The black woman will get involved and say, hey, don't talk to my husband like that. This is my husband. Who do you think you are? Nye, 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 nye. The black man will be standing there like a simp. We see it all the time. Pick and pay what he needs. You understand? Shop right. 
go in the eye. You see it all the time. That is what's going on right here. You understand? Read on. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name uh -huh. and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and, and, and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. You see that thing? A lot of the times, then, you ever seen these mothers? I'm going to beg to the mothers, the mother and son relationship, because this relationship that you see here, the mother and son relationship is going to be the same as a wife and husband relationship. You understand? Now watch this. A lot of the times you notice when a woman is raising a son by herself, right? The man is, no, there's no man involved. She'd be saying things like, you know, my son, my son is the love of my life. You understand? You, anybody ever hear that before? You men? Yes, you heard that before, right? He says, my, you know, my son is the love of my life. You know, he's the man of the house. This is the man of the house right here. You hear that all the time. And the son will be, let's say the son wants to get a car. The mother will tell him exactly what to do. You understand? The son says, I want to get married. The mother will stand in the middle. The mother will be the one that will approve the type of woman that he must marry. Meaning what? The type of woman that is just like her. When the son brings a type of woman that she don't like, which is the her complete opposite, you understand? Who wants this man to be a man? The, the mother will not like that type of woman. They're not going to get along. You understand? It happens all the time. So, guess what? She's the one that is going to be what? She's going to be saying, you see, my son bought a new car. Hey, my son got a new job. My son bought me this. My son built me a new house. My son this and all that, right? But in the house, she knows she's the one that's running the show. But on the outside, she makes it seem like the son, you know, he's got his own mind. He's a man. Likewise, with the husband and wife, that when, we, when they go outside, he's going to make it see, she's going to make it seem like he's running the show. But she knows that in the house, guess what? She's running the show. So that's what's going on. Because when, and when she's going to be saying, oh, my husband, oh, no, my husband this. But she don't believe that. She don't believe that because she don't submit herself to him. She just like the title of a marriage, but she wants to be a man in the marriage. You see that thing? That's why there'll be disorder in marriages. That's what you see here. This right here is an example of what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 1426. Okay? Read on. Verse 10 now. Jump down to verse 10. You know what? Read verse 9. Read verse 9. Watch this. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast and set an mm. on high among the people. You see what she did? She's making herself to look like she's righteous. You know, these sisters, they like to wear, they, they wear long dresses and all that. They like to appear righteous, but she's a drug. She is a black, ashy demon. You understand? She is a gift of Satan. But they look good on the outside, but she is the devil the Bible speaks of. So you see what she's saying here? Oh, proclaim a fast and to do what? To go against the boss so that they can, she can, she can look, she can make it seem like she's righteous. Nabath is the devil and Nabath is going against the king. So we must proclaim a fast so that Nabath can be taught a lesson. And everybody will agree with that because why? Because remember, Jezebel always has a following. Jezebel always has men following her, men worshiping her. That's why you see a lot of these women, those that are married and not married, those that are married that are independent, but they are married. You see? They are the ones that they have a lot of male friends. You ever seen that? Yes, sir. You see a lot of these sisters, they've got guy friends. Oh, no, that's my friend. He's a guy friend of mine. This is a guy friend of mine. You know, why, why do you think they say guy? Why don't they say boy? Because that's a boy. That's not a man. But they, you know, if you say boyfriend, it, it, has a, it has a new ring to it, doesn't it? You see that thing? It's just a play on words. They replace boy with guy, but it's still the same. It's a boyfriend. 
Oh, that's another boyfriend of mine. That's what she's saying. Oh, that's another boy. She's known by a lot of men because Jezebel always has a following. She always has a following of men that were raised by their mothers and she knows them. She knows how to pick them out. She knows how to select them. She knows what they need. She knows how to control them. She knows their insecurities because these men that are raised by their mothers, they have a low self-esteem. Jezebel knows how to make them feel like they are, you know, they look like Denzel when they really look like Uncle Rakas. You see that thing? But Jezebel will make you feel like that. Okay? Because Jezebel, she's deceitful. Jezebel, she knows how to deal. She knows how to work a man. She, she knows how to manipulate a man. Jezebel is manipulative. Guess what? The brothers that are raised by their mothers, that are emotional, that they are weak into their emotions, you cannot correct them. They are very manipulative. Very, very manipulative. They will manipulate you. You understand? When you correct them, they cry. Make me sick. Why? Because instead of you taking the correction, you cry. What the hell is this? Now, read on. Verse 10. Come on. Verse book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And said two men, sons of Belial. Belial. Now, you see that? And said, and said two men, sons of Belial, meaning sons of the devil. You see, Jezebel always has men. Jezebel, her following is not, is not the majority is men. It's not women. Jezebel has men followers. That's why when we go to the streets, when we go to camp and teach, whenever we get on the, whenever we get on the black woman, we correct the black woman, how she's, how she must conduct herself. Who always come to her rescue? Captain Saberhold. You always see them. You can, you never fail. They never fail. They jump like a frog. They come to save the Jezebel. All the time. But when we correct the black man, Jezebel never stands up to come and correct the black man, to come and defend the black man. I've never seen it. All my years of teaching camp, I've never seen that thing. Never. I've never seen it. Okay. Now, read that thing again, verse 10. Okay, come on. This book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 10. Mm-hmm. And said two men, sons of Belial, before him to be witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. Mm -hmm. And then carried him out and stoned him that he may die. You see that thing? Now Jezebel is like, listen, I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to put Naboth to death. I'm going to be the one, I'm going to be the hitman. I'm going to set men Though those that they are eating out of my biscuit, they are the ones that are gonna do this thing on, on your on, on your behalf. Don't worry about this. Jezebel always have followers. Now, guess what? Black men that are raised by their mothers, they marry their own mothers. The women that they get married to, these women that are gonna fight their battles for them, these women that are gonna go to war for them. But that woman is not doing it because she loves you, she's doing it because she loves power. That's why she's doing it. She knows she's got power over you and she's going to make sure that she's got power over other men as well. I'm going to give an example. Give me 1 Kings chapter 18, the chapters before it. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 18, read verse 17. First book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 17. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? You see that thing? Ahab is, a, is confronting Elijah, the prophet. is saying, are you that's troubling Israel? You troubling Israel. You see what he, he's looking at Elijah as, as an enemy. Guess what? You men, you so-called men that are being raised by your mothers, whenever the classes are going out, like right now, I know there's, there's one or two brothers right now they are mad as hell. They are not happy of what's coming around. You understand? In your mind, you say, he's troubling Israel. He's speaking evil of me. You understand? He's insensitive is all this. Men up. That's what the Lord says. Men up. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 18. Read. 
And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but uh -huh. thou and thy father's house. In that he have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim, Baalim. You have followed, you have followed ba Balaam. You see what they did? They followed Balaam, meaning the devil. And who's leading the charge? The black woman. Because whenever they, you worship the woman, that's idolatry. Who's the black man's God? The black woman. That's what we're reading here. But watch this. Because remember, the, this type of woman, she's covetous. She needs to have more men under her thumb. She wants to control them. You understand that? So now keep reading. Watch this. That's why a lot of these women, single or married, they have a lot of boyfriends. Meaning they call, they, they call them guy friends. Oh, no, that's my guy friend. That's my colleague. Oh, this is the guy I used to go to school with. But you still could be in contact with them, but you say you're married. You see that thing? Go ahead. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And the prophets of Baal, 400. Hey. Go ahead. Excuse me, sir. And the prophets of Baal, 450. Mm. And the prophets of the groves, 400 which mm. eat at Jezebel's table. You see that thing? 450 prophets of ba Baal and prophets of the groves, meaning the graven images, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Jezebel had 850 men that ate, that ate at her table, meaning what? She had influence over them. 850 men. They, ate, they were doing Jezebel's bidding. You see that thing? Don't we see that in our community? We see that all the time. <laughs> you understand? We see that all the time. You cannot make this up. Okay? Now, watch this. So, a lot of the times that these men, they don't leave these black dragons. They don't leave them. Why? Give me Sarah 9 verse 2. I want to show you why they don't leave. Sarak 9, read verse 2. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 9, verse 2. Read. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 2. Go ahead. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. That's a commandment right there. It says, don't give your soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Meaning what? Don't give your mind to this woman. Don't give your soul, your dignity to this woman. Then she's disrespecting you. You understand? She don't honor you. You understand? She sees you as a simp. You understand? So the law says don't do that. Don't give your soul unto a woman for her to eat her dinner on your head. That's what the Lord is saying. The only reason why a man, a brother will find himself between a woman's legs. You understand? The woman is controlling him by what's between her knees is because, guess what? You think with your rod, you think with your penis. You don't think with your mind up here. You think with the little man downstairs. That's how you think. Your decisions, every decision you make is dictated by the potential of you thinking that you're gonna have sex with a woman. That's why today black men are destroyed today because they are simps. They don't want to man up, why? Because you have such a low self-esteem when a woman smiles at you, guess what? You will sell your own soul just to be under that woman because you think you see the potential of you doing what? Having sex. And she can see that. She will string you along. That's why a lot of black men be killing black women because the woman will be stringing this man along. You understand? And the man thinks that he's going to get something because men don't do things for free. Let me say that again, you simple sisters. Men don't do things for free. You understand? Men in the world, they don't do things for free. When you come into this truth, obviously you're going to learn how men are supposed to be as a man. And you sisters, you're going to understand what type of a godly man, a godly man, what does he look like? How does he conduct himself? Now read that verse again, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 2. Go ahead. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Go ahead, watch this. Read. 
meet not with an harlot, mm -hmm. lest thou fall into her snares. Lest thou fall into her trap. What is a trap? What's between her knees? Because I get it that Jezebel woman, she knows how to work her stuff. She knows how to control a man with her coochie. She knows how to work that thing. She knows how to control men. Look at Zoto Avant. You see how many young men are flocking to that Jezebel? How many young men are sexing her? Because she's always tightening her vagina. It's all over the social media. She says she always goes for surgery to tighten her vagina. Because that's her snares. Read the verse again, verse 3. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 3. Go ahead. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou mm -hmm. fall into her snares. Lest thou fall into her snares. Guess what? Your mother spiritually castrated you. She, con she controlled your sex life. Who you get married to even? She turned you into a woman worshiper. Now you get married. Guess what? Because your mother couldn't physically sex you, but she made sure that she controlled your loins. Now you get married. Jezebel that you married to, which is your mother, guess what? She's going to control you. How? By what's between her knees. She will control you. And she knows how to control you. That's how you'll be begging for it. You understand? Keep going. Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer. Meaning a woman that is, she's what? She will flatter you with her tongue. She what? She's got what? She's got strange lips. This woman right here, she knows how to, how to work a man's appetite. She knows how to control a man's mind by her tongue. Okay, go ahead. Lest thou be taken with her attempts. Lest you are taken with her attempts. To what? To destroy you. To turn you into a piece of bread. Go ahead. Gaze not on a maid. Lest thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. He says, don't, God, don't fall for a woman. Meaning her beauty. You fall for her beauty. Guess what? Now her beauty is holding you prisoner. It says... You wanna that you that you fall not by those things that are precious in her. The things that are precious in her is her snares in verse three. Her snares is what? What's between her legs? What's on her chest? Remember what we read in Luke eleven, verse twenty-seven and twenty-eight. The woman was called, was telling Christ to worship her mother, to worship his mother. Guess what? You brothers that are boys, guess what? You have fallen for the things that are precious in the woman. The big booty, the big breasts. You understand what's between her knees? The potential that you'll be able to, you're going to get some. You fall for those things because you what? You are not ready to grow up yet. You think with your loins. You cannot be in this truth. You think with your penis. The Lord cannot use you. Go ahead. If you don't repent. Read. Give not thy soul unto harlots, mm -hmm. that thou lose not thine inheritance. Because you're going to lose your inheritance when you give your soul to a hope. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay? So it's time for the black man to man up. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 29. Give me Proverbs chapter 29. Read verse 3. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 3. Go ahead. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. Uh -huh. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. You see what the Bible is saying? If you love, it says, if you love wisdom, you're going to re rejoice your father. But it says, you keep company with harlots, meaning with what? Prostitutes. You understand? Whorish minded women. Women that don't want to get married. Women that are going to use men for what they, what their money or their power. Because women love money and power. They love that. It says, but if we spend company, keep it company with harlots, you're going to spend your substance because she's going to destroy you. That's what the Lord is saying. She will turn you into a piece of bread. And how does she control men? She control men by what's between her knees. And because when you think with your penis, guess what? You are the victim. You are a young man void of understanding. 
Get that in Proverbs 7 real quick. Proverbs 7, read verse 5. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, mm -hmm. from the stranger which flattereth with her words. A woman that is a singer, she knows how to flatter a man. Read on. For at the window of my house, I look through them, I look through my casement. So he's saying, I, I look through my window. As I'm looking through my window, what am I seeing? And beheld among the simple ones. Among the dumb Negro, the dumb brothers, the overgrown boys, you understand? Full of emotions. Read. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. You see that thing? A young man that has no understanding. They are filled with youthful lusts. You understand? They are filled with youthful lusts. They see a woman, they just want to have sex. You understand? So these are not men. These are still boys. Doesn't matter how old they are, whether they are 42, whether they are 38, whether they are 55, whatever the case may be. They are what? They are young men void of understanding. They have no understanding of the scriptures. So they are not qualified to build a nation. Okay, go ahead. Passing through the street near her corner. Mm -hmm. And he went the way to her house. You see what? This woman, he says, passing the, through the street near her corner. And he, the young man void of understanding in verse 7, he went the way to her house because she knows how to catch men. You understand? So I'm showing you that when you're raised by your mother, there, there's no male figure in your life. These, these are the domino effect. This is what's going to happen in your life. You're going to hook up, hook up with a sister. This is what she's going to do to you because why? You don't have sense. They that lead thee, cause thee to err. The women that ruled over you, they cause you to what? To be emotional. You don't know how to pick a spouse because you're using her as an example. And she's a poor example at that. Proverbs chapter 6, read verse 23. Read verse 24. This is the, the, this is the domino effect that will take place in your life. You understand? Watch this. Read it. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 24. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman. Mm -hmm. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. You're not, you're not going to know how to stay away from this type of woman. Because you've, be, you've been around this woman all your life. So you think that's normal. That's not normal. You're going to have a disorder in your marriage. You're going to have a disorder in your marriage because you had a dishonor in the way you were brought up. The way you were brought up was not right because you were raised to be a woman, to worship a woman, or to be gay. You understand? Now, you're not going to be able to spot a woman that is going to destroy your life because you've seen that all your life. You think that's normal. Okay? Read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 24. Mm-hmm. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. You see that thing? The strange woman is that woman that you are married to. The only reason why she's with you is so that she can have control and rule over you. Go ahead. Last not after her beauty in thine heart. Because she knows how to entice you. She entices you with her makeup, with the with the big booty and big breast and all that. She enticed you like that. Go ahead. Neither let, me, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Because the way she looks at you, she looks at you because like she wants you. Because when now you have a low self-esteem, you understand? You have a low self-esteem, you're going to fall for the Jezebel. You're going to fall for that cougar. Like Kanyiba always says, she's a self-proclaimed cougar. You're going to fall for people like Upel Tuzi, who moon child, those black, ashy, demonic, orish women. Go ahead. For by means of a whorish woman, a oh, man. No. For by means of a what type of woman now? For by means of a whorish woman. And by means of a whorish woman. Remember, verse 24 and 25, that's the whorish woman. The whorish woman is evil. She flatter you with her tongue. You understand? She she uses her, her, her so-called strength, which is a beauty 
her body and all that, her tongue, her eyelids, the way she look at you. That this, these right here, these are the characteristics of a whorish woman. Neither let her take, take you with her eyelids. Meaning what? She knows how to get deck herself to entice you. She make you feel like you're the best thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. And that's not the case. Guess what? You are the son of God. You men need to understand that. Okay? You are the sons of God. You are the gods on this earth. So it's time to men up to men up, grow some balls. Get your balls back. Because your balls, your balls were grown from birth. You must get them back. Take them. Demand your balls back. Read that again. Verse 26. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Because now your substance is gone. She's eating food on your plate. Now you have disorder in your marriage. But guess what? She, the only reason why she's there is because there are benefits. Once the benefit ends, she also, she's going to hit the road. She's going to look for the next victim that she's going to destroy, that's just like she destroyed you. You see that? Go ahead. And the adulteress will hunt for the person's life. So this is not a woman. This is, I mean, this is not a wife. That's why there's a saying goes, it says you cannot turn a whore into a housewife. They're letting you know right there, it says, the adulteress, didn't say the wife, it says the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. She will agree to get married to you because she knows that you, gotta be, you have a good name. You understand? You've got a good reputation. You've got your finances. Everything is all good, working, going well for you. The only reason why she's there is for those things. Once those things run out, because she's going to dry them out quickly. Once they're gone, she also gone. You understand? That's what's going to happen to you. These are the effects when you are raised by your mother. Here's the next point. Because you men that are raised by your mothers, you are overly emotional. Oh my God. Overly emotional. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah 3 verse 12. Let me show you something. Isaiah chapter 3, read verse 12 for me. Hmm. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Go ahead. As for my people, children of the oppressors, read, and women rule over them. Go ahead. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to earn, and destroy the way of thy paths. You see that thing? It says, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. You know what this goes into? Guess what? These women, because they are leading you, they are ruling over you, they are ruling you over you to have toxic emotions. You have toxic emotions that not, you always, you have, you, you have mood swings as a brother. You have mood swings all the time. One minute you are fine, one minute you're not. You understand? You have mood swings. We can see it even with your face that this brother is overly emotional. You don't know how to deal with things like a man. He deals with things like a woman, like a small child. He's going to be miserable. He's going to be crying the whole day and the snot will be coming out of his mouth. He will not uh, pull up his, uh, his pampas and all that. He's, you ever seen kids like that? When they are crying, they're throwing tantrums. They just be crying after their mother in the mall. Uh, uh. The pants are sagging. He's crying. The, the snot is coming out of his nose. You understand? It's just a mess. A lot of you, you just like that. You bet. It's time to grow up. Okay? Now watch this. Give me First Corinthians 6 verse 9. Overly emotional. Spiritually, you are like that. We do. Physically, it's not doesn't look like that, but spiritually, that's how you is. First Corinthians six and nine. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter six, verse nine. Go ahead. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh huh. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adul nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. No abusers of themselves with mankind. You see that thing? It says, don't be deceived. Neither fornicators. Fornicators is what? The men that are involved in sexual sins. Masturbation. Watching porn. You understand? 
looking at women to want to sex them and all that, those are fornicators. No idolaters. What, what's the idol? Your woman. Your woman, you worship this woman because you worship your mother. No adulterers, meaning they break the laws of marriage. No effeminate, because men that are raised by their mothers, they are highly effeminate, okay? Always into their feelings, okay? Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick, okay? Let's get some definitions. I want you to read that. Read that, the definition of effeminate. The definition of effeminate. Uh -huh. Adjective. Mm. Of a man. Having characteristics regarded as, a, as typical of a woman. Uh -huh. mm. You see that? Read that again, read that again. I want this thing to hit some, to hit some nubby. Read it again. The definition of effeminate. Adjective. Uh -huh. Of a man. Having characteristics regarded as typical of a woman and manly. You see that? A man that has characteristics of a woman is unmanly. This is not a man. That's the what that's what we're dealing with in our in our nation today. Okay, let's read the synonyms. Read that. Unmanly. Unmanly. Mm. Go ahead. Womanish. Womanish. I like the next one right there. Watch this. <laughs> Foolish. For pish. For pish. Mm. Go ahead. For pish. Affected. He is affected. Meaning his manhood is affected. Go ahead. Nemini <laughs> pinimi. Welcome to the English language. Yeah. Read that again. Nemini <laughs> pinimi. Nemini pinimi. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read on. Minting. You see, minting, walking and minting as they go. Like a woman. Isaiah 3.16. Walking and minting as they go. You see brothers be switching. When he walks, he's switching like a woman. Okay, go ahead. Posturing. Posturing. Even the way he stands, you see something wrong here. Go ahead. Queenie. Mm, Queenie. Campy. Uh huh. Read that part right there. Limp wristed. Limp wristed. What is that? Broken wing syndrome. Broken wing syndrome. You see that thing? So, what the Lord is letting us know is that this type of men will not see the kingdom because this is an example of a gentleman. Uh, Brother Hegai, could you send me the definition of a gentleman? Was it gentle or gentleman what we're going over the last time? I want to I want to get into that. Could you give me the send me the link of that? I want to see that thing. Because we looked at this uh thing a couple of weeks back, maybe two weeks ago, or last week. I'm, I don't remember. Did you get it? Hey, anybody remember that? Anybody, anybody still have that? Um, you know what? That's fine. Let's let's deal with that. I think I might have it. Let's see. Yes, read that definition of gentle. The definition of gentle. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Mm -hmm. Having or showing a mild, kind or tender temperament or character so this now let's read the, the example what is what is just say a gentle sensitive man you see that thing right there that right there is men that are raised by their mothers they are gentle they are gentle and they are sensitive mm. effeminate now watch this i want you to read that let's read that Docile, because gentle is another word for docile, right? Let's see, because this now, well, I'm showing you, because I show you the, the example of an alpha, which is our forefather Abraham. Now I'm giving you an example, the examples of a gentleman. This is an example. A gentleman is, this is a gentleman right here. Now read it. 
the definition of docile, adjective, uh -huh. mm. ready to accept control or instruction. Go Sub ahead. Sub what? Submissive. Submissive. This is talking about a gentleman. Is as a gentleman is ready to accept control or instruction, submissive. And particularly, the woman is the one that is giving instruction to this man. The woman is the one that is dominating this man, and this man is submissive to the woman. You see that thing? That's a gentleman right there. A gentleman is just like this. Some of you men, you gentlemen have been here. I'm hearing things that are happening in the congregation, right? Where something so small has turned into something demonic. Brother is throwing tantrums like a child. There's an example right here. He's a gentleman. Docile. Nimini pinimi. Beard and borough bore of blue fringes on. Grown man with full fringes. But this is the behavior right here. That's a crack in his personality. That is mental hang up. You understand? Ten times I'm seeing here. Okay. Now read that. Watch this. Mm. Read that. Read that thing right there. Watch this. Read that. Similar. Passive. Mm. Passive. He is passive. A gentleman is a passive man. Okay. Now I want. I want other. Hmm. Read that. Yielding. Yielding. Okay. Right there. Right, that one right there. Controllable. Controllable. You see that thing right there? Hmm. Read that. Because they didn't highlight it, but let's highlight it. Manipulatable. Hmm. 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 Manipulable, manipulable, meaning you are easily manipulated. Now read that. Excuse me, sir. Easily manipulated. You see that thing? Easily manipulated. Now read that. Milky. He's milky because he's still holding on to his mother's breast. You can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this. Up. This is an example. That's a gentleman. This is a gentleman right here. Gentleman. Okay, that's a gentleman, docile. That's a gentleman. These that's an example of a gentleman. Overly emotional. You understand? Gentlemen, they are the ones that hold women's purses. They are the ones that go down on their knees on Valentine's Day. They are the ones that be buying chocolates. They are the ones that um they they are the ones that carry women's handbag. I'm gonna repeat that because that's a big thing in the black community. Not only that, the black man has been so inspired. By, the, by carrying a woman's handbag, now the black man, I see black men going around with handbags too. Anybody seen that? Yes, sir. They call them men purses. That's a man purse, right? No, no, no. That's a purse. That right there is a, is a handbag. But the black man, these effeminate black men, they've got muscles, but they are weak. They've got weak minds. Guess what? They've been inspired by the black, by carrying a woman's handbag. Now he's decided to get a purse of his own. You can't make it up. You can't make this stuff up. Now, give me the book of Proverbs 15 verse 5. Because when they, they are given instruction, I think they are overly emotional. When you talk to them rough, here's what happens. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 15. Read verse 5 for me. Okay, watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 5. Go ahead. A fool despises his father's instruction. Meaning leadership's instruction. Okay, go ahead. But he that regarded reproof is prudent. But he that regarded reproof, meaning correction, is prudent. Meaning they're going to be wise. Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 10. Mm-hmm. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. You see that thing? Correction is going to be painful to him that forsaketh the way. Meaning what? They don't want to obey or apply the laws of God. So correction is going to be grievous unto them. They always want to seem like 
we are always on your case. Yes, the reason why we are always on your case because you forsake the way of the Lord. Read. And he that hateth reproof shall die. You hate reproof, you're going to die. You're going to die in your sins because you hate reproof. And when you correct them, the first thing they say, who are you going to tell me this? You understand? Who are you that going to, you think when are you, you, you think you're better than us. So you're going to, who are you going to tell me what to do? You're not going to tell me what to do. Watch this. Give me Exodus 2 verse 11. They only behave that way when men talk to them like a man. But a woman talk to them, listen, they don't put up a fight. Because you've been conditioned to worship the woman. When she speaks, oh, God is speaking. That's the mindset of a sin. Okay? Read that. Exodus 2 verse 11. And guess what? When we talk to you like a man, we want you to speak with your chest. Watch this. Is because we're trying to help you. We, try, we want you to grow up. Give me that in Exodus 2 verse 11. And when we correct you, we are helping you. When Moses was helping one of his brethren in Egypt, this is what they did. Watch this. Exodus 2 verse 11. The book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 11. Read. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. So he saw an Egyptian smiting his brethren, right? Watch this. Read on. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Because he saw an injustice being done against his brother, he decided to deal with the situation. And he killed the Egyptian, he buried him in the sand. Watch what happens next. Because remember, Moses decided to what to fight for his nation at this point. Watch what happens next. Go ahead. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. Mm -hmm. And he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? You see what he's saying? Now the next day, he's seeing two Israelites, they are now fighting amongst themselves. Now he's going there and say, listen, why are you hitting your brother? Why are you hating your brother in your heart? He's correcting them, right? Watch what happens next. Read on. And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? You see that thing? When he was rescuing them, they, didn't, they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they were okay with them. Now they are, he's rescuing them amongst themselves from themselves. Now they are saying, who made you a judge and ruler over us? I'll give an example. We go out, we correct our people. Sometimes we be putting these nations in check. We teach them, we teach the laws of God that vengeance is coming for them. The black men will be excited and all that. But the minute now we teach you in the camp to get your mind right, now you say, oh no, don't judge me. Who are you to tell me what to do? You see that thing? You're not going to tell me what to do. That's the same mindset here. Only when the man says it, they, list, they don't listen. But let the woman say, that's why when you look at the Christian church, you see homosexual men, effeminate men, and the black woman. The black woman is always checking the black man, telling the black man what to sit, where to sit, what to say, how to say it, how to dress and all that. But when the black man speaks like a man in the spirit of Christ, the black man gets upset. He can even, he can even put hands on you. That right there, that's a spiritual hang-up. That's a flaw in the character which needs to be repented for. Read on. Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? You see that? So you're going to kill me the same way you killed the Egyptian? I'm going to show you the mindset of Israel. You understand? Go ahead. And Moses feared and said, surely this this thing is known. Because they went and told the Egyptians what Moses had done. Wicked Israelites. Okay. Give me Luke 20 verse 1. Luke 20 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Luke. Chapter 20 verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass. That on one of those days. As he taught the people in the temple. And preached the gospel. 
the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders. So now Christ was teaching. The chief priests and scribes and the elders, they are coming unto Christ now because he was teaching the gospel, right? Watch this. And he spake unto him, and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Mm -hmm. Or who is he that gave thee this authority? That's the same thing that they said to Moses in Egypt. He says, by what authority doest thou these things? Who is he that gave thee this authority? Who gave you authority to teach us? To teach us like this, the way that you are teaching us. Because Christ didn't pray. He taught with, with, with power. He taught with boldness. You understand? The way he taught, he didn't play with nobody when it comes to this book. You understand? So when we bring it out like that, that's why you men, when you go off, you get checked. Some of you, when you are corrected, you become highly emotional because you are a woman. You understand? Spiritually, your mother castrated you. Now, guess what? The women that you used to deal with in the world, they castrated you physically because they controlled your sex life. You beg for sex. You had to get high. You have to get drunk. You have to do. You have to do things out of character for the potential of getting the coochie. You understand? You destroy your own soul so that the woman can see you suffering and say, "You know what? I feel sorry for you, so I'm gonna give you some." That's the mindset of a simp. That's the mindset of an overgrown baby, an overgrown boy, an overgrown man. So he thinks he is. But it's time to change that. It's time to repent. You understand? Matthew 11 verse 6. The book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. Go ahead. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see what Christ says? Read again verse 6. The book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he Whosoever shall not be offended in me. So don't be offended as these classes are coming up. Don't be offended. The Lord says, blessed is he that shall not be offended. They didn't want bringing this out. They say, you're overly emotional. Because when you correct it, you just become emotional. You hold grudges. You get upset. You get mad. You throw tantrums. You understand? We don't got time for that. Let me tell you that right now. We don't have time for that stuff. This is not the Christian church. You understand? Because in the Christian church, Guess what? You, they, they deal thing, they deal with things partially. There's partiality in the Christian church. There's no partiality. You understand? Some of you, you deal with us in the congregation the way you were dealing with the women that you used to deal with in the world. You do things for them. You understand? When you don't get what you want, you throw tantrums. You start to have bitterness in your spirit. We're not going to move like that. We are not going to be moved by your tantrums. Understand that. We were too hard to get here. There's no Negro that is going to mess this up. The mission is going to is, is a go. We're going to roll over you. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me that in First Esther 4 verse 18. Okay. First Esther 4 verse 18. First book of Esther. Chapter 4, verse 18. Right? Yea, and if men have gathered together gold and silver, mm -hmm. or any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty? You see that thing? They gather the silver and the gold for the woman to please the woman because the one was between her knees. Read on. And letting all those things go, do they not gape and even with open mouth fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold or any goodly thing whatsoever? Meaning what? They will, they will, they will give up those things to her for her, if you understand what I'm saying. They gather this silver and gold and they're going to entice this woman with the silver and gold so that they can what? For the potential of getting with her. And when they get with her, those things, they don't seem important anymore. So she has access, free access to them because they want to, they now they have access to her. You see that thing? Or oh, the potential. Go ahead. A man leaveth his own father that brought him up. 
and his own country and cleave it unto his wife. And leave it unto his wife. This goes into Genesis 2.24. Read on. He speaketh not to spend his life with his wife. And remembereth neither father, nor mother, nor country. Meaning they don't remember their father, their mother, nor the country they come from. Because they saw this woman. Read on. By this also he must know that women have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? You see that thing? So women have dominion over men. Women have power over men. What is the power that women over, have over men was between their knees. But a godly man will not be controlled by them. A godly man will not be manip manipulated by them. A godly man will know that he is a son of God, the most High God, and guess what? He is the prize. The woman is not the prize. The man is the prize. Understand that. The man is the prize. Understand that thing. Keep reading. You know what? Jump down to verse. Read verse 26. First book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. You see that thing? They've run out of their wits. They've run out of their mind. They're they are smart for women. Okay, go ahead. And become servants for their sakes. And you become servants for their sakes. So when you are raised by your mother, these are the problems that you're going to experience in your marriage too. The relationship that you have with your wife that you're going to get married to. The relationship that you're going to have with the brothers in the congregation. You're not going to have a good relationship with the brothers in the congregation because why? You are a woman. You worship the woman. So you cannot relate with men. So when you throw tantrums, that's an, a simple sign to tell me that you are a woman. You're still holding on your mother's breast. And the women that you dealt with, they still have power and rule and dominion over you. You're not ready to lead your nation or to teach your nation for that matter yet. You understand? Go ahead. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. You see that thing? Many also have died. They have erred in the faith. They have sinned, goes and broken God's laws for the woman. You understand? Read on. Go ahead. He's going to give an example of what happened. This is the king of Persia now. Watch this. And now, do you not believe me? Is it not the great king in his power? Mm -hmm. Do not all regions fear to touch him? He says all the regions that he's ruling over, they fear to touch him. But he's going to give an example of how powerful the woman is because the king is what? The king is a simp. Read. Yet did I see him and Apami, the king's concubine, mm. the daughter of the admirable Bartokas, really? sitting at the right hand of the king. So he says, I'm, I'm looking at Apami, sitting ne next to the king, at the right hand of the king. What is she doing? Go ahead. And taking the crown from the king's head. Mm. You see, the disrespect. A lot of you, you men, Women in your life, they've taken the crown from you. They have their crown on their head. Read on. Watch this. And setting it upon her own head. Mm, the disrespect. Go ahead. She also struck the king with her left hand. She smacked the king across the face. The disrespect. Read on. And yet, for all this, the king gave and gazed upon her with open mouth. The king didn't do nothing. He was gaping and he was just looking at the woman with open mouth, shocked. Keep going. Is he going to do nothing? No, he's not going to do nothing. Watch this. Read on. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. You see that? If she laughed, he also laughed. So she controlled every aspect of his life. Read on. But... If she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter. You see that thing? If she was unhappy, he was unhappy as well. You see that thing? That's why 
One thing that I despise with my whole heart, you ask a brother, bro, are you fine? Yes, I'm fine. But you look at him, the brother is still full of demons. He doesn't want to get his mind right. He wants to be the center of attention. That right there, that's an example of a woman because sisters like to do that. Sis, are you fine? I'm fine, sir. But you can see the sister's not fine. Me, I'm only going to ask you once. The next time, I'm going to put you on blast. Because we don't have time for this type of stuff. You have the Holy Scriptures of the law with you. But you don't apply it. You want to be the center of attention. That right there is demonic activity. Okay, go ahead. That she might be reconciled to him again. Mm -hmm. Oh, ye men. How can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? You see that thing? It says women are strong because look what this woman is able to do to the king of Persia. Because the Persian king was raised by his mother, not his father, based on his behavior. Although even though the father was in the house, was around because he became, took the throne, the mother was running the show. That's what you see today in our individuality. You see that thing? Now watch this. I'm almost done. Give me the book of 2 Ezra 10 verse 33. Listen to what the law says now. This is a message to the brothers. Now watch this. The message has been to the brothers and I've been dealing with the sisters as well. But watch this thing right here. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 10 verse 33. Because at this point, Ezra, he got into his feelings. This is what the Lord says to him. Read it. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 10 verse 33. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, stand up manfully, and mm. I will advise thee. You see what the Lord, the, the Lord, when he sees there's some weakness, weakness in you, you playing games, you are into your feelings, here's what the Lord will say to you. Read again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 10, verse 33. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. That's what the Lord said to Ezra. Stand up manfully. Then I'm going to deal with you. Then I'm going to guide you. Then I'm going to put my spirit upon you to go out there and teach my nation. You know, you cannot go out there being a wimp. You cannot go out there being weak, low self-esteem when you have the holy scriptures of the law with you. You have teachers over you to teach you. All you have to do, just obey, humble down and apply what this Bible is saying. Follow our faith. Watch this. First Maccabees 2.64. Let's get there. This is how you get your balls back. Okay? This is how you get your balls back, black man. Watch this. First Maccabees 2.64. Let's read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 64. Read. Wherefore ye, my sons, be valiant mm -hmm. and show yourselves men in the, in the behalf of the Lord. Go ahead. For by it shall ye obtain glory. You see that thing? He says we must be valiant, we must be courageous, you men, and show yourselves men on the behalf of the law. When you become a man, you stand up for this Bible. Men of God, the, a man will stand up for the Bible. But a boy will stand up for the coochie. A man will stand up to carry a woman's handbag. A boy, that's what a boy will do. A gentleman will go down on his knees and propose to his wife. You cannot make this stuff up. You understand? That's a gentleman. But a man of the Lord, an alpha, they're going to stand up for the laws of God. They're not going to stand up for the coochie. They're not going to stand up just so they can drink that coochie juice. Them days are over. Read again, read again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 64. Go ahead. Wherefore, ye my sons, be mm. valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the Lord. Read. For by it shall ye obtain glory. Mm -hmm. By it, you're going to receive the kingdom of heaven on earth. Rulership of empires. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. Give me Isaiah 46 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 46 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember this and show yourselves men Bring it again to mind, oh, you mm -hmm. transgressors. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, remember this. 
and show yourselves men. Remember what? Remember the laws of God and show yourself men and bring it again to mind, meaning bring God's commandments to your mind, O ye transgressors. Because what was the sin? Men, won't want, men not wanting to stand up for this Bible. Black men don't want to take their rightful place as the head of the community to build their nation back up. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Give me 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. Because the Apostle Paul addressed this thing. Because there was weak men who didn't want to grow up. Because guess what? Black men are afraid to stand up. You know why? They are afraid to take responsibility and accountability to be in the front. They are afraid to do that thing. Because it takes what? It takes responsibility, self-examination to be a leader. Understand that. Now read that. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. First book of Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 13. Uh -huh. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, mm -hmm. greet you like men, be strong. You see what the apostle Paul is saying? He says, watch ye, meaning watch for the souls of your nation. Stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, meaning conduct yourself like men. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Now read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. But when that which is perfect is come. No, no, no. First Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. First book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11. Go ahead. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. Go I ahead. thought but when I became a man, I put away childish things. You see what the Bible is saying? When I was a child, I speak like a child because children, the why do they speak? Children, they'll be asking for dumb stuff. It says, and I understood as a child. Meaning what? I didn't understand. I didn't understand what it means to be responsible. I did not understand what it means, what it means to take responsibility for my actions. But he says, because I thought as a child, but when I became a man, how do you become a man? You are taught God's laws. You obey and apply. Humble down to what the Bible says. You let men raise you up as a man. Not women. Women cannot raise a man to be a man according to the Bible. Men do that. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Meaning what? I stopped smoking. I stopped sleeping around. I stopped being a baby's mom, a mama's baby. I stopped being a baby daddy. I stopped, you understand? I stopped prostituting my own sisters. I got married. I got a job. I got a place to stay. I save up money so I can get married to a righteous sister of the High. That's what men do. Boys, they don't do none of those things. They don't think about that. You understand? Men will pull their pants up. They'll grow their beard. Stop making cheese cup on their head. And let they're going to stop allowing women to rule over them. Because that's a sin. Okay? Now watch this. Give me, you know what, before you go there, read that again for me, verse 11. First book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Come on. I stood as a child, I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You're going to put away childish things. How do you do that? Give me first, second Esther, chapter 14. Read verse Verse 13 for me. Second Esther 14, verse 13. Let's read that. Second book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 13. Come on. Now therefore, set thine house in order. Mm -hmm. Do what? Set thine house in order. Is a set your house in order. Because in order for you to have a, a house that is ordered well, according to the scriptures, you must obey. Because remember, when you are raised by your mother, you are raised to worship the woman. You are raised to become effeminate or be gay. When you get married, you, con you continue the same childish things. But when you become a man, you set your house in order, you're going to put away childish things. You're going to stop thinking like a child. You're going to stop doing childish. You're going to stop throwing tantrums. You're going to stop being overly emotional. You understand? Read again, verse 13. Second book of Esther, chapter 14, verse 13. Read. Now therefore, set thine house in order. Mm -hmm. and reprove thy people. Go ahead. 
comfort such of them as be in trouble uh -huh. and now renounce corruption so the first thing that you must do is as you must set your house in order give me first peter's 2 verse 5 the first house that you must set in order is your spirit your mind okay you must set your spirit in order according to the lord watch this first peter's 2 verse 5 First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Go ahead. Ye also, as lively stones, mm -hmm. are built up a spiritual house. A what kind of house? Are built up a spiritual house. Remember, give me First Corinthians 3, 16 real quick. We're coming back here. It says, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. The spiritual house, who's the spiritual house now? Read that. First Corinthians 6, 3, verse 16. This is the spiritual house that we're building now. Read it. First book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? We are what? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? We are the temple of God. We are that spiritual house now. Because the temple of Jerusalem, the physical temple was destroyed. Now we are that spiritual temple. The Lord is letting us know that we are that spiritual house. Go ahead. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. And that the spirit of God dwells in you. The spirit of God is the laws of God. We're supposed to direct your path. Your path are not supposed to be directed by no woman. Read on as a man. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For How the do you defile the temple? Hold on. If any man defile the temple of God, how does one defile the temple of God? When you as a man, you allow the woman to counsel you, to guide you, to what? To tell you what to do when the Mosa is the one that's supposed to do that. Because our forefather, Adam, he made that mistake. Instead of him teaching his wife over time, he guess what? The wife listened to the serpent, which is the white man. And guess what? The wife now started to teach Adam. The roles were reversed. Now the Lord says, no, 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 I don't want that. I want you to set things in order according to how I commanded you. We listen to the Lord. The woman listen to us because we obey what this Bible says as it is written. Read again verse 17 now. For it has been declared unto me. No, 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 no. Verse 17. 1 Corinthians 3. Verse 17. Excuse me, sir. First book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Mm -hmm. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You see that temple? So we are the temple now. So go back to 1 Peter 2, verse 5. So we understand what the apostle Peter was saying here. Okay, read. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, mm -hmm. up, up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You see that thing? So the spiritual house, the way the spiritual, the only way the spiritual house is going to be built up is we offer, we must offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to the most High God by Jesus Christ, meaning by Christ's sacrifice. So now, here is saying, we must build the spiritual house. How do we do that? We keep God's commandments. Give me Romans 12 verse 2. We, of, we must offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable. Romans 12 verse 1. Start verse 1. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Read. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So now it says we must present our bodies a living sacrifice. A sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto God because that's our reasonable service. So the sacrifices that you now make is a, those are spiritual sacrifices. What spiritual sacrifices must you make to build the spiritual house which is your mind? Give me that in Romans 7 verse 14. Of Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am Stop calling. Right for we know that the law is spiritual. The laws of God, they are spiritual. So in order for you to build up the spiritual house, so that you can present your body a living sacrifice, 
you must obey the laws of God. You must apply God's laws to your life to change you. That's how you, you build up that spiritual house. That's how you present your body a living sacrifice. So one of the, so the, the, there's things that you must sacrifice, you understand, for the sake of the kingdom. What must you do? If you know that you are a sin, you worship the woman, you repent, you follow the Lord. If you know that you, you are hooked on a woman's coochie, you must repent, keep God's commandments so the Lord can send you a righteous sister who's not going to control you with their feminine wiles. You understand? If you know that you, you worship what's between a woman's knees, it's time to repent. That's how you offer spiritual sacrifices. You understand? You know that you, you are hooked on a woman and all that. You must stop them. Why? Because you must get your mind right. You must prepare yourself for a wife. Just like the sisters must prepare themselves for a husband. There's not going to be drollering going on up in here. That's not happening. We find you, we kick you out the camp because we're building a nation. You understand? So that's how we build up those spiritual houses. You stop watching porn, we catch you, you gone. You understand? Stop masturbating, choking the chicken because the day you get married, guess what's going to happen to you? Now you're not going to be able to, you are going to already have marital, you're going to have marital problems in your, before you even get married. Sisters as well, we're using dildos and no bananas and cucumbers, that must stop. Because the day you get married, you're going to find a brother who's not as big as a cucumber. Guess what? He's not going to satisfy you. Before you know it, that marriage is finished. We don't want that. You know that you've been using cucumbers and all that. Let the parachute shrink back in. Throw away the cucumber and the banana and the dildo. They must go into the trash so that your parachute can shrink back in, you understand, naturally, so that you'll be able to deal with the man, your shoe size. Understand that, okay? This is nation building time. Understand what's going on here, okay? Now, watch this. Give me, you know what? Mm, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Um, go back to First Peter 2. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Ray. He also as lively stones, mm -hmm. I built up a spiritual house. Come on. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we must offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. How do we do that? We obey the laws of God. That's how we, we're going to present our bodies a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable. So that means what? Um, you stop worshiping the woman. You stop using your body as an instrument of fornication. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians. Uh, you know, 1 Thessalonians 4, read verse 2. 1 book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. For this is the will of God even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. You see that thing? You must abstain from fornication. That's how you cleanse your temple. You must stop committing sexual sins as a man. You must stop because if, if, if your mind is buried in a woman's vagina, you will commit sexual sins because why? You're going to want to satisfy the lust of your flesh. The Lord says, you must abstain from fornication, which is sexual sense. Okay, go ahead. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So you must possess your vessel in sanctification and honor because sanctification means to be cleansed. How do you get cleansed? You keep the laws of God. You stop choking the chicken. You stop watching porn. You stop allowing yourself to be controlled by a woman's vagina. That thing must stop. The most that God's laws must be the apple of your eye. Then when you find a sister, that sister, you're going to love that sister like as you love yourself. You're going you're gonna to teach you, you're going to guide her. You, she's gonna, that's your best friend right there. You're going to build a family with her. And your, you building a family is going to dictate what type of nation will be built. That's why it's important that both men and women, 
you are in your right mind. Read on. Not in the lust of concupiscence. Concupiscence is evil sexual desires. Wanting to have sex with multiple women. You understand? Wanting to go to a summit. You understand? Wanting to sleep with prostitute, giving prostitute money. That thing must stop. Okay, go ahead. Even as the Gentiles, which know not God. Because the Gentiles don't know the law. That's why they do what they do. You understand? That's why they're always wearing bum shorts and miniskirts showing their breasts. Guess what? Our sisters are doing the same thing and our brothers are doing the same thing. They wear tops that show their chest. They wear tight pants because they think women are looking at their junk and all that. That's what's going on now. That's not godly. That's of Satan. That's of the devil. Okay? It's time to repent. Okay? So I'm going to end the class right there. I'll end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You know what? Hmm. Full circle. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Read verse 26. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. Disquieting of good men. Great. Faithfulness of good terms. Defiling of souls. Changing of kind. Disorder in marriages. Adultery. And shameless uncleanness. You see what happens when, when there's, the roles are reversed, when the good men are destroyed, they forget good terms. Their mind gets, your mind gets defiled as a man because you worship your mother. Then you're going to worship the woman that you're going to marry or the girlfriends that you're going to sleep with before you come into this truth. Or you come into this truth, you're still worshiping the woman. It says that's going to cause disorder in your marriage. Not only that, it's going to cause you to commit adultery with a woman or with a man because you were raised by your mother to worship the woman or to hate the woman so you can deal with another man. And shameless and thinness that goes into what? Having sex with a woman on her menstrual, having sex with another man, masturbating, watching porn, you understand? Dealing with prostitutes. The law says that thing must end. You must repent. Go ahead. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, mm. the cause, and the end of all evil. You see that thing? The worshipping of idols was the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Because the first sin in the garden was idolatry, worshipping of idols. The Lord says, we, right here, right here, that's the sin that is going to cause disorder in marriages. It's going to cause roles to be reversed in the marriages because men is going to be, become one to be women. Women will become men. Children will be confused because of what? Idolatry. That is what's going to cause, that's what, that's the reason why our nation is destroyed. Okay. It's time to repent, to return back to the most High God. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break, break. Okay. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praise to the Lord. To the most high, all praise.